All right. Good evening, everybody. We're going to start our meeting, planning board meeting for April 9th, 2024, um, at 6.30. Could I get a roll call, please, Linda? Yeah. Hello, Dr. Young. Ben Foreman. Chairman Joyner. Present. Jean Shetsky. We can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. Virginia. Right now, yeah, now. Present. Okay. Virginia. <laughs> Present. Foster. And Ginny Casico. Oh, well, it's Victoria and Virginia. There's no Virginia except Ginny, right? Ginny. I mean, there's Victoria and then Ginny. Ginny, got it. You have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, oh, oh, and you, you forgot Randall Martin. And oh, Sue. Randall. I'm, I'm so sorry, Randall. And Susan. Susan also. <laughs> Everyone is present and accounted for, except my brain. <laughs> okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, can I get a motion to open the public hearing for 6 dash Ball Avenue? I make a motion that you open it for 6 dash. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. All, right. all right, it's 612. We're all here. Um, Wonderful. So we submitted some uh, supplemental information to you all back in February. Uh, um, and this is the first time we're appearing again since that information was submitted. Uh, um, I know, Victoria, you had some questions about uh, that you had asked. Um, I think that they were kind of resolved in the maps that we sent, the Declaration of Common Primary Utility Easement. They were not. I'm happy to have a Zoom meeting if you want to talk about it online. But the, the 
maps say one thing and the letter says another thing and the document says another thing, they just don't match. So okay. I think we need to figure out some of the inconsistencies. Like for instance, um, the declaration talks about the road being a separate lot, but the map is showing it as part of the back lot scheme. No. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. Well, so the plan shows it as part of um, lot 16. <laughs> the site plan, civil site plan, show it as one lot. So there's so, just a bunch of inconsistencies which are making it difficult to understand what was. Okay. Oh, you hear me now? Uh, Chris Berger. Right. Right. He, he replaced Ryan. 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 Okay. Nice okay. To see you. Um, well, again, we won't waste everybody's time about it, but we have created lot 17. I thought we assigned everything to lot 17 that was requested. Not on the subdivision plan. That means we live in February. I think we still need to have the discussion because for me, when I read it, it's not consistent. What is, so what is the date of that particular? Um, well, this, I'm so confused now because we submitted all of this to you guys back in February. This one, um, the date mm -hmm. uh, oh, thank you. is not. Uh, oh, so February 2nd. So it, here, so this is the site plan. And if you see the site plan, there's a thin line here. Yeah. That's not a lot line. That is the drive. That is a pavement line. So that's not a site plan. That's his utility plan. Correct. But right. so you're saying the utility plan is not. And bring that closer to the board members. Please. Yes. This one. Yeah. yeah. We need to see it. That I think this is the actual. This is my plan. This is the actual. So, uh, let's just say. So this is not a lot. This is the last one. No, 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 no. Yeah. Look, point, 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 yes. point, chunk, 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 point. So you're going here? Uh -huh. That's a lot. Okay. okay, but it's so then it's inconsistent on the site plan. It's met, it drops these lines. But okay, okay. okay. Oh, that that where does that where does that one end? Does it end, end up the 17? Yeah, on this side. So, so on this side it's right here, which is the consistent property line by the way. Okay. And so it's not property line. And then at um everyone's suggestion we created a lot that is so the road back. Yeah. So, so the road, everybody, sorry you can't see it probably. The road is enclosed in its own individual lot, which is something we yeah. spent. I was going to even put that it was all, all the way out here, but I see I see the little one. Yeah, and yeah. since Pat or somebody described it as a hammerhead, if you look at it, you see a little hammer there. With the right, yeah. but on the end, I thought it was also another kind of hammerhead. No, no, it's just there's a when we um, subdivided the property, that yeah. was the property line, so it has some south of that too. So some of the some of the issues though, let's yeah, just talk right. through them. So the sidewalks are on the HOA lot, right? The sidewalks are on the HOA lot, correct. So who's responsible for maintaining the sidewalks? The HOA. I don't think it was clear that that the sidewalks are not addressed in the declaration, and then so. The parking spaces are also in the HOA lot. So you want to make it clear who can use those parking spaces? Uh, anybody who wants to. It's it's like that. No. Um, yeah, if you want to come down and park, I think you're okay there. Well, so these are the types of technical things I think you should oh, okay. have a meeting to have well, about. Because okay. there's also like your your grinder pumps for each of the lots are under the porch and then they need to connect it into the sewer. So if you're building your porch yes, over here, correct. And we're concerned that when they need to be fixed, you're gonna have to pull the whole porch. Whatever the architects build a little access patch or some of this little ring and you pull it up and you're okay, but that wasn't so you're that's one of the things that wasn't 
responded to them. Okay, I'm so I'm sure it was, but look, I mean, here's the thing. You guys have to tell us the list. Mm -hmm. We spent a long time answering questions. Every couple of months we get a letter, we answer it. So we we think we're done. So we're I'm trying to get a subdivision approval just to get lot divisions. And we've located our grinder pumps. Mm -hmm. We've had the surveys completed for your specifications. We went through four letters from Ryan, and then we hit all the city stuff. So if you can help us, it would be greatly appreciated. So I, I did provide a memo in March of last year, and I think it'd be helpful if you could respond item by item. Okay. So you can do that on a Zoom meeting, or you can do it in a memo. Okay, but just to confirm, does that look familiar to you? Have you ever yes, seen that? Yes, I've read that. Yeah, okay, because okay. okay. I, I think these answers are in here. It addresses all the of these. Again, the, the documents don't necessarily match the map. The, okay. the, all right. the issue we were having. Okay, so if you can help us, it would be great. Because at this point, we've changed the going so many times, we're chasing around here. Okay. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the board? From 612 Hudson? No. Um, I will be issuing a review letter to Mark. It's done. Please <coughs> can sit down and we'll meet with you. And we're ready to comment. So for the board's sake, we're talking about some details or perhaps some minor consistencies you're talking about. Correct. All right. There's yeah. no major issues. In this There's case. nothing major. There's just a lot of you know cleanup stuff that needs to happen. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I'd be glad to meet with you and all those things. All right. Yeah. Would it be possible to close the public hearing pending the receipt of these things? We'll, we'll can do it next. No. Week. No. Who said that? Me. Oh, sorry. Oh. People can't do this on the block and pay some tax. No, we we're not going to we We'll 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 get it next month when this should do with the back, right? All right. Okay. So, um, any any questions from the public for six twelve? Hudson Avenue. Any comments? Oh, any comments on the on? on can you get removed? Who is he? What we've never seen this guy before. Who is he? Chris If you live on our block, where you Hello. Okay, I'm gonna wait a minute. Don't look that way, sir. Please control yourself. Don't look that way. Okay. So let's let's continue the meeting. He has a right to be here just as everybody else. Just because you don't know him, don't mean he doesn't be here. But please, sir, control yourself. No, don't disrespect anyone with the finger and the eye and whatever else. Everybody else just sit down, you know, and act like adults. Okay? No, no, no. Okay. I need a moment. A motion to continue the uh, public hearing for 612 Hudson Avenue until next month. Okay. All in favor? Any opposed? All right. Now, a motion to open up the public hearing for 735 Columbia Street. Are they? Are they I'm sorry? No, they're, they're not. not they're not. Okay. A motion to open it up. I need the motion. Second. All in favor? Any opposed? Uh, we're going to um, postpone. Well, first, I okay. Any questions from the planning board for 735? No, I'm sorry. Any questions from you? Because we did get a nice, you want to go over your comments? Okay. So, the status is just what is the status update? Yeah. Um, 735, I issued a comment letter. Yeah. Um, Could you just, no. Mr. General? Engineering concerns and comments on the plans. Mm -hmm. um, plans needed to be detailed a little more. Um, more information needed to be provided. So we'll see if we get those drafts in. I mean, anybody have any questions for Chris? Because he did issue um, some comments. Everybody got copies of my. Yeah, and everybody got it, right? Did yeah. you get it, Ben? Yeah. Any questions? 
Could you reset that? I think I said that. <laughs> well, I'll send it to you. Yeah. Um, Let me take um, Thank you. You need me to resend it to you? Could you resend that? Okay. You don't have to do it right now. Okay, but I remember. Text me or send it to my Okay? And no comments? Everybody read it? Okay. Any questions from the public on 735 Columbia Street? I mean, Anybody here? Okay, can I get a motion to continue 735 Columbia Street for next month, which is uh, May what? 14th? May 14th? Yeah, next meeting as well. May 14th. May 14th. Can I get a motion? Yeah. Oh, second. Okay. Oh, no. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay. Can I get a motion to open up the public hearing for 601 Union Street? All in favor? Aye. Okay, are you? Are we here? Thank you so much. And one for our Thank you. 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 Okay. Did you get the comments from Chris? And did um and is it in the think the, you want to talk about? Yeah, I think the the, the impression we got when we left the last meeting is that we got a comment letter from Ryan. Um we have responded to Ryan. He hadn't had a chance to review those responses. His comment at that time, he quickly looked through it. If he said it looked like we answered most of his questions he really just needed to kind of do a gut check on the split so we fully intended on coming here with a drafted resolution for approval or a drafted resolution um obviously christian was brought on we had a conference call with you about reviewing essentially making sure gut checking that we responded to his comments that the SWIFT that we talked about had all the relevant information that showed that we meet all the requirements for SPD permit. Obviously, it's not a full SWIFT, but that's not what was agreed upon for the board. Um, I think a lot of the comments in here, and again, sympathizing with Christian because he hasn't seen the project to start, there are quite a few comments that we've already resolved. There are quite a few comments, I think, that rise to the CD level document that that are necessarily the purview, not the purview of the planning board, but not they don't uh, they're not required by your zoning and they don't point the seeker specifically that wastewater sizing and inverts and pumping calculations and that sort of thing. That's all technical data that is done by the design engineer. Um, and then there are a handful of things that I think are, we can update their little notes that again hasn't changed since we submitted last, whatever it was, May, June of last year, um, calling out a curb detail, calling out a building to be demolished, that sort of thing versus, you know, existing versus proposed. Those are minor details, but it, it, we're a little frustrated that we were under the impression that we were at the, we were at the five yard line on that spot. And then now we have, a stalled resolution draft because there's a handful of comments that have been made, more than a handful of comments that have been made, that again, most of which has been resolved, many of which are beyond the scope of the planning board from a detailed perspective. 
And then again, some are just odds and ends that hadn't been brought up to now, but we can certainly add them. It's just, again, we're pushing a year without that left, that sort of comment. So it seems like we're taking multiple dips at the well. So I think similarly, we would like the list. I think this list, we need to have a yeah. another sidebar and we'd like to do it next week. Get on a horn, run through it line by line so yep. we can check these. And I have no problem coming down to your office and anything. That's good. probably probably that way we can pull yeah. plans out, look at it, yeah, go over my concerns with the plan. Yep. There are some drainage concerns, there are things, there's discrepancies between the architectural plans that were submitted and your plan. Um, there's some more detail that I think should be on there. Um, defining your work limits on where your utilities are going to. Um, the sewer calculations should be in the engineering report. That should be documented. Um, those are easy things that you can go quality one. They'll do all sewer calculations. Oh, yeah. And you can spit those out and get them in the report. Yeah. There's other things in the report, like your um, loading calculations. You're not talking about any loading calculations. You're a factor of you know. So those need to be in the report. So there are things in there that do need to be addressed and, and, and fixed. Um, the plans that get stamped by the planning board are the ones that are going to the building inspector to get built. So they should have all materials on there. You should have all sidewalk details. You should have catch basins, inverts should be shown on the plan. Um, the work limits, that the pavements should be shown on the plan. So there's a detail that need to be on the plan. Yeah, and that's where I think when we get on the horn, again, they're shown on the plan. We don't we don't show everything of the design on every plan. Obviously, those sewer inverts, the drainage inverts, all those catch basin inverts are on the SWIFT plans. Those aren't part of the site plan. That's the speedies permit document that we ultimately got the SWIFT plans. They don't necessarily live on or need to be on the site plan. So I think those are some of the things that we just need to hash through. Yeah, and but we're going to disagree about that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's where we need to hash through. But again, because I feel like we're reinventing the wheel a little bit, I really appreciate if we can make sure that next week we get on the horn, Victoria, you're in a position to at least get whatever boilerplate resolution that you normally have with the conditions that we know we've got. We know we've got a, a wastewater issue that we're resolving with the DEC. We know we need a speedies permit for the SWIFT, but I'd like to have that laid out so that any odds and ends come and potentially a little leeway on the 15 day submission timeline because some of this back and forth uh, has proven to take longer than anticipated. Um, so I think if we're able to, and again, I know there's been a mix up in, in the in the process. So understanding that, if we could just make sure that we're all on the same page, we're hitting it as quickly as possible, we're in a position to have a draft resolution prepared with some odds and ends potentially based on the outcome of our meeting, revised design documents that satisfy Christian, and we're in a good spot next month because we've got it. Okay, it was also something about the lighting. Yes, the, the, exactly. yeah. 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 The, the last um, time, the last meeting, we actually discussed it. You we discussed it. I was at the last said, meeting. Yeah, but we I did not see the, the lighting on the plan. You're proposing 15 foot lights, 16 feet off the property. That and that range, right? 30 or a two foot can allowed at 30 meters. So the board, the, board, the, board on, the board did have a discussion at the last meeting, and at the time the board decided they you were going to waive the requirement for a lighting plan. Um, oh, but, oh, but your planner has since recommended yes. that, you, that you not waive it. So I think it's worth a discussion tonight whether you're going, you know, whether you want to have them require the information or whether you stand with your prior decision, which was to waive that information. Remember how close he is to the neighbors and other people that live in the area. So you know, it was something that we brought up. And early on, we spoke about the lighting in terms of, you know, you know not being intrusive about the neighbors. And I think you mentioned, someone mentioned that the, the directivity of the light yes. was, would have a cow so that it wouldn't so that it wouldn't spill, it spill out. But that apparently is not but correct. Our, but our engineer didn't feel that that was... The uh, photometrics that were provided for the lights that are right up next to the property are circular light pictures that you had in all directions. And so that's... Yeah, they are going to light up the neighbor's property. That's, that's, that's the... And that's not what you said to us. So. Well, what I had said is that in, it's in keeping with that. When you give a specific light fixture, it doesn't, it, there's options for a shield. So anytime you're putting a light pole next to a property line, you're not allowed to, to, to 
shine a light on the neighboring property, but you need a minimum of a tenth of a foot candle, mm -hmm. you put a shroud on the backside of that so it directs away. If the planning board is now again, I feel like we're kind of taking a step back and yes. talk about it. Right. Well, so we are, the photometric plan is one thing, but the plans, if you have said that there's going to be a shroud to block, that should be reflected on the plans, yeah. obviously. Otherwise, I mean, if that's what you present, that's what should be on the yeah, plan. The, the level of detail that's been provided to the board is showing where the light locations are and then the landscape architecture plan with essentially kind of mood boards that show what the lighting types are going to be on the property. The, the property is, that, that was suitable and that we didn't, didn't need an ISO lumen plan. Again, we can do ISO lumen plans, we can specify the lighting, we can do all of that stuff. It's just knowing that we have to do it so that we don't go to meetings yeah. down the line and then find out what that we have to do. Well, we apologize for that, but it happens. Okay. I know, but it's been a year. Well, yeah. first yeah. off, it's not Sorry. uncommon for Sorry. a project of this size to have a thorough review process, and a lot of that was also back and forth waiting for new submissions. So I don't think it's fair to characterize it as all the board's fault. Also, I just want to point out, I know you're asking for the resolution, and it's up to the board. The board directs me to prepare it, sure. not the applicant. So sure. if the board wants it, I'm happy yeah. to have it ready for the next meeting if it's if yeah. the board's ready for it. We, so. No, we... Uh, no. say, I say I would really right. well, 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 I mean, this is a concern because yeah. it was a specific issue. I and mean, you know, we, we had contention with the neighbor, and I know you guys went a long way in resolving a lot of the issues, but this was one of those issues. I'm not saying that we need a whole you know photometric plan, but we do need something that addresses that specific issue that the neighbors raised. Because without that kind of clarity, if we step the plans, you can build it without the shroud. And then you know it would be where it is. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. we can we can yeah. add that to the life plan again, yeah. just knowing that we have uh, well, the board request yeah. showing it and you know. Well, yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. looking at so you have yeah. a different yeah. well, let's, let's be clear. You're asking for them to identify each and every light fixture. And look. but then the next question is: Do you just want the light fixtures, or do you also want the ISO lumen plan? Well, the ice aluminum plan is what tells us how far that light shines, right? right? Yeah. Whether it shines on the neighbor or not, I think we should go for that. I mean, it's up to the board. What do you think? Well, I would recommend that you prepare an ice aluminum plan. Okay. Every project that I've done, you always prepare an ice aluminum plan to make sure that your zero foot candles at your property line and not affecting neighbors. And remember, Hudson is only 2.5 square miles. Everything that's built is built next to a resident. So, you know, and we want everybody to live happily together. And again, just uh, being sympathetic with the situation that's at hand, we explicitly talked about this last month. It was explicitly waived, and now we're back here this month, and now you're requesting it. So, again, I think it's one of those situations where we really want to get together, get a meeting next month or, or next week, hash this out, make sure that we're in a good spot. And again, would it employ the, the planning board, at least have Victoria, again, a lot of that language is stock language. It's dates of drawing submittals. It's who the applicant is. There can be a resolution at the 90% point with some minor conditions that can be added in in real time or subsequent to the meeting, but enough for you to act at the next month. Uh, again, if we just, just we to... feel so we will. Yeah, you know, act, great, but great. you know, if we don't, we won't. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yes. I appreciate you know, we do apologize, but that's just how it is. Sure, so we had the light discussion. Is there any other piece of information that's been requested that you think the board should not be requiring or that you want to talk about with everyone? There was nothing that jumped out at me that we couldn't work through with Christian that needed the board's input. I think, again, I think we really covered most things with the board already, and now it's just more of the technical items. But, well, and the, the parking spot was a board request um, to widen the spot, which we've done. That was, when we left uh, last yeah. month, it was from planning side, it was to figure out if we're going to widen the parking spot or yeah. not. Like we so we, we did, we just widened. Did spaces? We did, but we widened it to, to meet that. That was the only thing that we had down for planning board, mm -hmm. and everything else we could run through and make sure Christian is Getting everything that he that he wants and that feels comfortable, so we can kind of we'll just pick up from where we left off with Ryan. And his wants are our wants. His concerns, his wants are 
Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I know. It's but I, it's our concern. Oh, yeah. Well, so when you say, as a blanket. You say the planning board. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Bring me back. Sorry. Include I got the engineering in. comment. Sorry. You're included. I'm yeah. oh, sorry. Include us in. Okay. Yes, yeah, you are. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and Andy, we uh, need to get a week if you want it. Okay. On this week, Friday. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's start. Any comments from the board? Thank you. Or, um, um, there was one, I'm sorry, there was one other thing that popped into my head that was a comment in the letter, but I think we talked about with Ryan and we've kind of hashed through, but one of the comments was to provide a full SWIP. Um, I think we, we all talked about, we talked about on the call that we're going to develop a full SWIP as part of the state law that we have to do a stormwater plan and that meets the state's requirements. We've provided with the board and their consultant with a plan that shows the, the the elements of that stormwater plan that are that are relevant the runoff production value the water quality volume the, the channel the, all the quantity volume calculations all that stuff so I think getting feedback from the board and just putting it on the record that a full SWIP isn't going to be required because the full SWIP really the information he has and the board has is the meat and potatoes of a stormwater plan. The rest of it's the little minutia of the details of invert elevations and so on, which are shown on the plans currently. It's just a matter of, if the board is requesting a full flip, we need to know that because that's a very different animal than what's been provided, but it's it's formality first to a certain degree. I can say what's been asked of other applicants. Other applicants have submitted full slips to the board, full-blown reports. So and that's all I can go with is yeah. what has been asked of the past applicant. And that's and what's in his comment too that he's uh, requesting. And again, this is something that's got with the board that, and with Ryan at the time that we're not going to need a full SWIP. We're just going to need enough information to show that you can meet your runoff production volume, your water quality volume treatment, your water quantity volume treatment, the grading so we know what the area of impact is under seeker, and so on. Again, when uh, the the meat and potatoes of the technical data is there. It's just whether or not you need us to write the report and do all the details and include the hydrocad, which he has. Again, it's just knowing what the board is going to want. If we have a disagreement when we meet, then we got to wait a month to find out what the board is going to want. Okay, you're saying um, all these But he's telling you clearly. It, right. Yeah. Yeah. It would be my opinion that they should prepare a full SWIFT, the full blown report, all the documentation. And that's what it's done in every other planning board, even ones that this is from, you know are not in that for. But even and well, cool. when, when Ryan said that typically isn't requested, and that's what he wasn't requesting of us, but right. which was three months ago, and that's what we have in comment. Well, and I guess the question would be. What does that give you beyond what you need to make a secret be done? It's just a set of eyes looking at the report because DEC does not look at it. Right. But I guess my question is what beyond what you've already been provided, that a SWIP, that the narrative in the SWIP, we've all written them and looked at them. There, it, it's, it's a lot of making sure your maintenance and operation, you know, man, or sections in there that, that wasn't included. Um, it, there's just little things in there. That are just making sure we're done with the keys where I've across and you know keys across. So in because of this change in consulting, which we understand and different opinions, different set of eyes, would it be amenable to make the SWIP a condition of approval? I mean, given that you've gotten most of the yep. order information already, yep. that's something that can be worked out. And that's where we were. In other words, right. that's, that's what we did. Yeah. That's why yeah. 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 that's that's we did. Exactly. We're just yeah. going to finalize this. So, yeah. So I think we're talking the same thing. Which is, yeah. Yeah. It's just going to be provided, yes. but just perhaps right. not before the board. Finally. Yeah, so does the board um, questions from the board about what we're talking about? No, but I think that's a question. Yes, I agree. Okay. okay, so we all agree to that. So, in general, we want the basic stormwater information on the plans because that affects the layout, yes. right? You want to make sure that the parking lot is draining to the right place. But then, once the layout, once it's enough to confirm the layout works, yep. you know, we can make the technicality yep. tonight on this application because of all that's happened, the condition of the group. Yeah. Okay. And once we're ready for that. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any more questions from the board? No, Okay. Any questions from the public for 601 Union Street? 
Hi, I'm Josh Mackey here on uh, Zoom. May I speak on behalf of Walter Brett? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, you'll recall that we represent Walter Brett, one of the neighbors, and I think that we've substantially worked through a lot of the issues that um, were of concern. Most recently, um, Ms. Hines and myself have been um, discussing the mechanicals on the roof for the new building, if everybody knows what I'm talking about. And I was pleased in some ways to get a response from Ms. Hines, that what's going on the roof are two condensing units and that um, the kind of sound they give off is 59 decibels. Uh, that's what I was told. Um, so there shouldn't be any impact at that noise level for Mr. Brett. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that that was on the record and somewhere in the plans that the mechanicals on the roof from, from the sound point of view are 59 decibels, that, that's what was represented to me. Um, I spoke with Mr. Brett about it. He was pleased to hear that. Um, again, there's been more good news coming his way. Um, so we're hoping, we're hopeful that that'll continue, but we would ask that the mechanicals, um, you know, certainly if there's a choice that these be installed, I'm gonna say to the right side of the building, if you're, um, of the roof, if you're looking out Walter's rear bedroom, window, um, if they're placed to the far right, um, almost behind Walter's garage, they'll, they'll also be out of his view. And that would provide some additional assurance. I don't know if that's possible from, from the uh, design point of view, but that's something that he's asking for. We can take a look at that from the mechanical side. I know there's certain maximum distances for line set runs and that sort of thing um, and just kind of even distribution. So we can certainly take a look at that. I appreciate that. Um, and then as far as um, we talked about a meeting with Walter and um, someone, someone from the applicants team, um, I just don't want to lose. I know, you know, Crystal and I are both busy, uh, but I want to make sure that this happens. Crystal, if we could try to, we could try to schedule this sometime before we come back for the next meeting. I think just a walk around with, with Walter, maybe yourself and somebody from your client's team. Um, we could just, you know, finalize everything and, and allay all the concerns, you know, once and for all. Yeah. If there, if there are any concerns, um, we, when we requested the meeting before uh, with you guys for the last hearing and then, uh, didn't hear back. And then when, when you responded, we thought that it was in response to us asking you to walk, but our walk was to make sure you guys were good. So, but if there is anything you guys want to discuss 100%, uh, myself and I'm the, the owner will be there as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I can, I can, I can see you guys got, you know, there's six or six or seven people on your team, Walter and I, a whole board, lots of attorneys. So I know there was some confusion, but I've, I've been following up for that. So I want to make sure that um, we do that. And who who is that speaking? I, it's hard to tell with the camera. It could either be George Washington or uh, or, or someone else. Who's, who's speaking? Josh, that's Gary Mead. Yeah, uh, Gary Mead here. Uh, okay, Gary. Gary, I'll follow yeah. up with Crystal and maybe, maybe we can yeah, make this happen in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. we'll walk. Uh, yeah, we can 100% do that. Okay. okay, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank I have you. nothing further. Thank you all. Okay. Oh, no, it's no hands, no. Such again. Yeah, that was the end of the budget. Okay. Can I get a motion to continue the public hearing so we on May 14th? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, just to be open. clear, are we... Is, is and don't worry about the 15 days, just if you can get things to us as yeah. good as you can, okay? Well, okay. but it's very little because, like, <laughs> I mean, 15, maybe we can give them a week, because we, there's going to have to be some turnaround, um, right? If we get something too long, what are you going to do? It depends on how many of them in if I get four, four, we'll get, four, we'll get four. it as soon as we can. Yeah. Okay.
Well, we'll, we'll have to stick to everything you give us will be there to there to, you know, okay. Take us out. okay. Even if yeah. we, you know, we have to review it right here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, just to be clear, has the board instructed Victoria to have a draft resolution? No, 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 no. yeah, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. No. No. So, right. we're not, so, we're not going to have a regular. Right. We're not going to well, say we're not. It, um, so do you, is that something that you can wait on and just yeah, decide I, offline? I think that has to be a board decision, if you're not. Yes. Yes, you may. Just for everyone's edification, there yeah. is an agenda meeting that occurs usually one week before the meeting where we review what we have. So anything after the agenda meeting date is too late. We have an agenda meeting, and at that point, the chair of women will tell me, prepare a resolution, I think we'll be ready, or don't, or she'll reach out to the board manager. Right. And they all have gotten the information. Everybody can submit those to them. Okay. All right. Okay. So our main goal is making Christian all up to exactly. yes. Yes. All right. yes. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. I'm, all right. Oh. Can I have a motion to open up the public hearing for um, the boulevard? Oh, it wouldn't. Before we go back, uh, did I say all in favor for the continue? Okay, good. Okay. Now, can I have a motion to open up the public hearing for the boulevards? Motion. Second. Team. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. What's your name, sir? Lou Piro. And I want to thank the board for their time and consideration tonight. I was here back in June, and we've been waiting for a few things to, to clear, yeah. so to speak, and we're back. And uh, my team was here last month, and they're back now. So I'm, for those that don't know me, I know they're new board members. Uh, I'm someone who doesn't live in Hudson, but grew up here. Yes. And my family owned a building up on Warren Street at 243 Warren. Mm -hmm. Bought by my grandparents in 1922, sold in 1986. And in 1986, Hudson was a very different place. Good portion of Warren Street was boarded up. And since that time, Hudson has had tremendous progress. Oh, yes. And our family continues to be part of the community here. We look forward to being part of the community going on into the future. We grew up in the neighborhood that we're proposing this project for. And it's it's something that it's a commercial property, but we're trying to make it a residential fix for that area. And so we're not using the commercial zoning as it could be used. We're going to do it as a residential, bring in sidewalks, trees, benches. And, and we know that there are concerns with progress with every project. We're trying to take them all into consideration. And uh oh, and I will not be an absentee landlord. My office will be in the building that we will be constructing. Okay, so there's going to be the outside man. Yes. Okay, so um, so we listened to you all the last time we were here. Yes, you we had a lot of concerns about the parking, about the traffic coming in and out of Fairview. So we've turned things around quite a bit. No longer are people entering and exiting the property from Fairview. Mm -hmm. At this point, we've, we've uh, made a one way access road towards the rear of the property. Uh, cars will enter on the park road and exit on the Oakwood. So that takes out that whole Fairview Avenue equation. Okay, so they can't enter in Parkwood. They have to, it's going to be a one way. They enter in Parkwood mm -hmm. and they exit on the Oakwood. It's a okay, one way, one way sort of access road in the back. The fair entrance or exit they previously yeah, that's gone. Yep, that's gone. Yeah. We are not proposing the first time on her. Okay. Then that this is gonna be just the well front. let me let me back up. Yeah, yeah. We're not proposing a long curve cut, we are proposing a new entrance. We're proposing a new entrance off of Parkwood yeah. and a new exit off. So that is a curb cut. Right, but not, 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 not on the yeah. Not on, well, there wasn't a existing one, but we're no longer, we're going to yeah, abandon that existing entrance. So did you take out the, the, the full pull and parking spaces? All right, that? those are also yeah. eliminated. We have to move those parking spaces that we lost to the rear of that access road. We yeah. have them along that. But so the, along the, the commercial stores are still going to be the commercial. We commercial spots are still going to be there. Right? We've actually changed that 
on round two, we've eliminated the commercial on the Parkwood Boulevard mm -hmm. side. We've added two two-bedroom apartments on that first floor there. We now just have the commercial on the Oakwood side. So now it's 20, so, 20 not 30, 30 apartments. So we, well, it's now 40 units. 40? Uh, Correct. Wasn't it 28? 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. Yeah. 30. Yeah. Okay, what is but it? 30? 30. 30. Okay, from 28 to 30. Yes, because that commercial space uh, uh, was replaced with those two two bedrooms. Okay, just let us know and go over how many ones, how many twos, and stuff like that. Okay. 22 two bedrooms. Okay, 22, two, and eight, 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 one eight, bedroom. Sorry, one bedroom, one bedroom. Yeah. Like two yeah. Two yeah. bedrooms. Okay. Well, yeah. 20, 20, one bedroom, one bedroom, 10 two bedrooms, and 10 two bedrooms. Two bedrooms. So, overall, um, you know, that also has the effect of reducing the parking demand. Um, so, although the number of on site spaces went down by a few, um, because there were 10 here and now there are seven here. Um, the parking generated by the residential space is less than what was being estimated for in total. Parking. How many? Um, in total, how many spaces? There are 27 spaces in total. Um, and with our revised numbers, we're still seeing um, about nine times the estimated need of available parking for the residential use, and still over two and a half times. Um, if you're building a building like that, wouldn't you want everybody to have their own space? Not, so, not so we're talking about three people have to find uh, space in the hotel. So, I mean, this is intended to be an urban environment. Um, you know, the ITE trip gen does not estimate a one to one ratio for parking generated and number of units. And just speaking personally as an employer in the city, a lot of the young people that I'm trying to recruit, they don't want to buy a car, they don't want to pay for registration, they don't want to pay for gas. It's a, so we're hoping that everybody doesn't have a problem. And so some people will and some people won't, but it won't, it's not expected to be a one more issue. What is your proposal for physical parking? That's the basic partnership. Um well I guest visitors or, or are you talking commercial visitors? Oh, oh, oh. I think that the guest visitors would park in the street. I think there's an expectation that some of the commercial traffic will park in the Spots here during the day because it, it's anticipated that there won't be a lot of people parking during the day because right. people with cars are probably going to go to work. So we'll have the commercial space, uh, you know, use the parking in the back during the day when everybody's gone. But I think guests will probably park on the street. But you're not going to have commercial spaces. Anymore. We're at one, and we're going to keep the commercial space here. Right. And so what what is that going to be? A store? Uh, well, we know it's going to be a store. little office. An office, his office. So, yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Oh, more, yeah. Okay. Maybe residents, right? You might want to have a office. Yeah. yeah. But it's not but mainly a job. That's going to gonna be the management yeah. office. You know, it would be law office. Law office. That's, yep. that's what I mean. But there, there will be other offices in there as well. Oh, okay. So it's a big thing. How many offices are you talking about? How many spaces? Six to eight right now. Yeah. Oh, so that's going to be a large space. Is that on the point? Yeah. So, it's, that's the other I don't, side of the question. I don't remember that. So, well, I've never would there be a note on the plan? I don't remember that. Office, the ratios for office and each one is different. Right. We're not proposing retail. We understand you're they're limited. You don't have to come back for some type of right. 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 So, uh, so originally, it was 7,200 roughly square feet of commercial on the ground, and we cut that in half. Was thirty six hundred really about That's right? You had like three commercial spots. Yeah. Now you combine that to one. Well, it's going to be. Uh, uh, we moved it. Office space. We, we originally had office space on the first floor here and on the side as well. This is eliminated to uh, and replaced with the two two bedroom apartments. This continues to be office space. The first floor. I have followed that. I just don't remember it being. Yeah, that was on the original plan. Well, it was one commercial space and then in an office. Yeah, and it was analyzed on a square foot basis for parking because, you know, it can be renovated inside and that sort of information. But on a square foot basis, that's that's what we're doing. All right, so it's in the new plan. So we're going to look at it. Okay. So I have a question about, um, are you keeping the empty lot separate? It's not merging any longer? This lot is not in the lot uh, merging plan that we submitted. Right. So that's why we left it. Well, what separate? 
What what's the rationale for not losing it? The person who owns it didn't want to sell it. We required an easement on that lot. So if the other lot is actually the one that can't be used for residential. Yeah, yeah, that. Can you show me where you're that is a lot that can't be used. This lot can't be used and the building is not on that lot. Okay, so you only had your contract vendee at the time you applied and you just didn't start that again? Sorry. Because that came in as part of the original application, right? So you only have an easement over it. Correct. Okay, so we'll have some kind of cross access easement as part of this project that allows in perpetuity the the entry and parking for the other lot. Right. Sounds like a so that's a that's a written document, right? Yeah, we, we did uh, in the original application they had consent from the property owner to to use yeah. the property. But I thought it was merging. Yeah, no, that was not that was that was consent to mm -hmm. include that parcel in the development. I think that's why they had asked us to make sure we show the lot line, mm -hmm. and so we we added it to this one. Well, the re the other reason we have to show the lot line is because that lot can't be used. It's restricted differently to do it. So we wanted to know the restricted area, but. Okay, we'll just have to make sure that it's obviously we can get any tied up so that the lot always has access because if anything ever happened to the one lot, like it's you'd have to back in the yeah. uh, well, and the plan wouldn't be the plan, you know. So yeah. Do you have an updated parking and traffic analysis with this new plan? I haven't finished and submitted it. We did rerun some of the numbers, um, and then you know I have our traffic executive summary here. The conclusions aren't different. There's still quite a bit of parking available based on the data that we collected, but I will definitely provide um, the updated version. I just wanted to make sure that we got, um, you know, some good feedback from the board before we finished kind of all the detailed calculations. I don't like charging my client twice to do the same thing. So I try to accept it. spaces? I'm so good. Parking spaces the same size of the previous plans. You we ended it. up going with the 10 by 20 back. Yes. Right, so no, okay. no variance. Okay. And in your analysis, you're going to include a specifically now the the two side streets, how that impacts the, the traffic coming out and merging onto back to family from the two side streets there. Yeah, so we're going to update the traffic study. I mean, overall, the number of trips um, of residential and commercial combined, which are not the same peak period, mm -hmm. are um, about 50, which is, in the grand scheme, very small for peak hour. Um, you know, the DEC uh, recommends 100 as a threshold for what is significant. So we're well under that threshold that Seeker right, as guidance. Um, and 100 so, total or 100? 100, 100 trips is what the DEC has recommended as significant when you think of kind of how many cars typically go back and forth in an hour. Right. And of course, it's it's tailored to each community, right? That mm -hmm. DEC guidance and each community can decide what it can or can't handle as a significant impact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, have you guys, at one point, when you were talking about uh, it being on the there was talk of uh, requests for a, a traffic device hmm. from the EC, and I understand the that. DOTA. DOTA, DOTA, DOTA. DOTA. Yeah. And, I, and I understand that they, they nixed that idea. Um, yeah, they were not supportive of adding new traffic lights when I spoke to the resident engineer. Um, you know, it, again, looking at the big picture, it has the effect of increasing congestion on Route 9. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we did reach out to them with the revised plan. We haven't heard back yet, but uh, we're in discussions with them. Okay. And is there uh, some sort of uh, feature that now uh, restricts people from that parking lot from going out into Fairview? Well, there won't. So there's a sidewalk here, and then this circle is actually going to be like a, a garden. Like a plant or something. Yeah. So um, it, that would like physically kind of. So it is a physical. I mean, area. it's not it's not a baller. I guess someone could. So people can enter from the area. Yes. They can't. Not if they're walking. It, if they're walking, they can enter. Yeah, there would be our and this would be just sidewalk. Um, we will get a rendering, another rendering. So, because that's 20 feet wide, though. That's Walter. Right? Yeah. Walter, <laughs> yeah. Walter, yeah. Walter, yeah. Walter, I just, just mentioned it, but I, 
Okay, the time for the drawing. Is that what we call yeah. the yeah. okay. okay, so whatever, whatever feature that you're going to have, I mean, because I think it's important that people not be able to go out there. Yeah, you know, yeah. Or some other state. Well, at a minimum signage. Right. Do not enter. <laughs> <laughs> it's designed to have plants oh, and sure. planters, sure. so it will not look like a few Okay. We'll get some type of a nice rendering picture when the time comes back. We will. Yes. Yes. Okay, it's almost done. Walter, you're working. It's just a perfect. Not I mean, so like moving forward, like the circle, we struggled with what that was for a while because it's not labeled as anything. I mean, we can label it. So, have you had this? We're trying to get a big picture from the and then I know we detail the crap. Yeah. We're see, this is happening for our earlier conversation as we make changes, chasing it all. That's where we need your help. Um, see, it's plants. Okay. Well, that's the new one. These are the lands. Yeah, these are the drawings. Yeah. That detail needs to be on the, the civil plan. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so this is the landscape plan, and um, you know, it's uh, as, as someone said, we we're going to plant a lot of trees, and I just wanted to point out here, this was the commercial, and we had that. Yeah, uh, full of parking. Park, yeah. Park. Park. Got a feeling you guys didn't like that very much. <laughs> yeah. So what we realized, if we because you know the geometry works, keep this open and it becomes private gardens for the apartments. So somebody's gonna get some really nice apartments coming yeah. out. Um, yeah. Are those street trees that DOT has approved? I know that they have we, areas that they like. We are very uh, don't like sure. <laughs> no, no, no. We're we're in the DOT approved street trees. We're columnar oaks, and I think we have some where it's appropriate some um, Norwegian uh, spruces. Right, because we wanted some evergreens to kind of mass and hide, but um, it's a very simple landscape plan, and um, we, we do have a lighting plan too, and photometrics hopefully acceptable. Um, and the height is two levels, three, 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 three. three. Um, I do have concern about the one way traffic in the back, it's eight feet wide, that's it, too narrow to you know, so it's just a rod of eight feet wide. So we made it 10. I don't know if you walk near the top of the building. Up, here. Up. It's oh. wider up there. Next down is at 25 and 27. Right here. Right there, yeah. there. Eight feet wide. So that, that's a concern, allowing access, you know, into the site. And then UT definitely needs to be, you know, brought in on the picture. Yeah. Um, all the curving, the radius is, you know, from Oakwood to Fairview need to be DOT approved and actually shown us as curves. Mm -hmm. um, there, you're proposing two handicap ramps onto Fairview. Those I, should you be know, eliminated. and the city DPW made the same comment about the ramps. And so we did get feedback from DPW. And so, yeah, we're planning. I think in my letter, I told you what type of curve you probably should yeah. propose. Right. Right. You think it's a piece of So, I guess, I mean, I was just questioning whether you could actually parallel park in those, in that. Is there enough room for a car and a, and and well, the car might come easy. Yeah, so yeah, so that's the chicken and the egg situation. We pushed the building as far forward as we could to get this, which um, you know, I, I think maybe a compact car parking thing, like where we could maybe do some small spaces back possible. I mean, I just don't know if we can get the building. Yeah, I don't think you can want a variance of the Yes. That's talking, it's right there. It's like a bill that says, I think, 20. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. talking. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I was going to ask that Christian, he's looking at whether when someone's pulling in, whether it's safe to have a parallel spot. So, so what is that road that you're going to So this goes in front of our cardboard and goes out of Okay. Exactly. See the little things that I think one says 27? This. Yeah, that's those those the parking spaces. spaces. Yes. Okay, so where is the road that takes you to uh, Oakwood? The parking is on the road. Can you see that? No, the road, road that takes you to Oakwood. Where look, look at the arrow. Yeah. They keep going. That's you driving the arrow. Oh. So the parking is on the other side of the road. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Trucks making deliveries. I think, did you have a, 
a feature or a, uh, about that, or even for ambulances in the front. So I guess let's break it apart to the different types of trucks, right? Yeah. So we do have a uh, trash, the like we here on the floor is right at the exteriors. So we'll have a paper trash pickup. Um, you know, we'd expect the ambulance to well, work here on Parkwood where they would have easy access to the you know, thing to be up there. That's the best way to access, um, you know, victims on the second floor. Um, and then we've also met with the fire department to talk about fire apparatus access. Yeah. Um, so we're in talks. We still have, you know, I actually met with them just before this meeting. So I'm following up on some questions they had about building construction type, sprinklers, that sort of thing. Um, but we are in current communication with them about making sure we have adequate fire access. Did you say that garbage delivery would be off of the pickup would be a bed? Right here. Yep. Yeah. Make sure that's clear to DOT. If yeah. you're having dumpsters back on to Route 9, they should, you know, they would have problems with that. Yeah. 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 That, that's yeah. Uh, yeah. We definitely and I'm thinking about relocating that to Oakwood Boulevard or one of those. Yeah, yeah. 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 sure. Oh, um, well, well, what's going to be on the inside? Yeah. The, the little. Piece. So we had a we had a little building, you know, the little trash room, but we can move it down here. That makes sense. Exactly. Or. The garbage truck can come here and the maintenance guy can take the can down. So, it's, it's a can kind of Well, there'd be many dumpsters. There's a little, yeah, you can get, uh, what have I got here? Six cubic yards, according to that. There's a thing like possession. I think I don't think we have a garbage truck. Yeah, you have to then go out there, go around that, and then, you know, and, and then you can Right, just, so that's kind of a happened. scheduling thing, like we'd have to make an arrangement with the carding company to get a repair of it, yeah. Yeah. I know the school just because it's behind my house. Sometimes they they pick up the trash at like three fifteen in the morning. I think mm -hmm. the kids aren't there. It's easy for them to do it. There's some traffic at that hour. The other comment I was going to have is the ADA spot need to be the pulley. Right. How uh, many? No. How many ADA spots there? How many need one? Um, but they do need to be fully. Put any apartments or uh, yeah, yeah, those got shaved down a little bit. I see. So yeah. you know, uh, we'll give you a little. Oh, for thirty or more. Is there two now? It goes on. Um, you're always two. Yes, yeah, so two eighty bucks. And I think last time I asked about four eighty. I don't think we have four units. I don't think we, yeah. I don't think we accept my time. Yeah, yeah we, we have to look. We're probably going to do two. I think that's. I don't know the co-owners. Yeah, I mean, if you if you want to make a suggestion for more, we're open to that. But I think two out of eighty is pretty good. I thought, oh, and I would suggest the putting the two together. That way, you're only six Yeah, good idea. And you're grabbing up space potentially out of it. Right. That's a good idea. What's the speed limit at that section up there? This is dirty. Every time. Every time. Jesus Christ. It's 40 right there. It's 40? Oh, wow. Like that. Oh, yeah. It's every year. It's 40. It's 40 on Mary Island on 30 on Parkwood and Oakwood. You know? Yeah. It's getting more than 25. I'm sorry. I thought I heard one of those boulevards. So, I want to ask a question. We have two entrances. Uh, one entrance to that part building and another entrance to the other. One or entrance. just one entrance. You can get into the building. Yeah, the into the building to the apartment. There are a lot. Thank oh, there's you. another one. Okay, yeah, sorry. quite a few. Uh, so, we want to make sure we have a good emergency. So, the main entrance for everybody to want to use is the one next to the elevator. Okay, we have a single elevator on this side. So what we did was we split this and we have a stair here and then stairs there and there. So the whole thing functions as one egress system. So you can get it in and out here, here, and yeah. here. So about four inches that's so four. And those main entrances on Fairview. Are they on the street? Or are they in the courtyard? They're in the courtyard here okay. and here. Okay. So you have a, hopefully a nice little closet here with an arch, yeah. nice the landscape, and you go in the entry. And there'll be a sidewalk on, on Fairview as well. Okay, you did get the um, you did get Chris's report. I got the letter. Okay, please. Yep. Yep. You know, don't ignore it. No, I don't. I think that 
you know, after the others, we'd love to have a sit down, you know, um, to just go through them in detail. I didn't see anything that jumped out at me as being particularly controversial, so much as a lot of I dying T crossing. Um, any feedback on our changes before we get into the details on the plan? So, are you happy with the changes? Yeah. Is everybody happy? Yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Sure. You were talking about the driveway and the parking that starts at 10 feet and goes down to 8 feet. Yeah, so there's a couple spots in there that are 8 feet wide. So, you're not going to be able to have parking in the driveway. In some spots? No. Yeah. April was the Iowa. So you've got a 10 foot parallel parking and you've got eight feet between that parallel parking okay. and the curb. That's really tight. Yeah. NFPA usually requires a 12 foot access aisle. Mm -hmm. um, you can get that reduced if your fire marshal you know, provides a letter saying, you know, we're okay with that access being well, right now they have to give us 12 feet. So we get a letter. 12 feet so. or a letter. Yeah. Um, so do they know that? You put it in the report. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, they should keep us falling because it's so much potential. Yeah. 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 My other Okay, Ben. Hello. Hi, guys. Ben has a question. Oh, I just really want to look into, I know 50 isn't high traffic by the rules, but I think context is key. And I know in the streets, 50 is a lot of cars to be added at a peak hour. And so I really want to see that traffic study and also understand right now, what is the traffic? What is the what is that difference? And what does that impact the residents? Taking a left-hand turn out of Fort Worth on the uh, route line is, you can sit there for like 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you are you part of it? No, we're gonna open, we're gonna open it up to the public in a minute, okay? Okay. All right. We don't want to get to that. Yeah, I, I no, but I thought yeah, she right. fixed. I also was just curious, is there any information or study on it's a three-story building? Mm -hmm. Will that block sunlight for any of the residences nearby? Shouldn't sure. we? Well, we're going to allow the building to be there. Know, I haven't that's... looked at that. I can, but did you ask me to that? Well, yeah. So, uh, the three story portion is uh, 20 feet from the west property line. And that's the only neighbor that could possibly be uh, affected. And they have a fence and a driveway and then a house. So, we could do shadow studies, but other than probably seven o'clock in the morning, they wouldn't be affected at all. You're thinking about just like solar yeah, access. Yeah, it's okay. or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because that might have to be Or just kind of so windows to be kind of see it. Like here's the house. Okay. Now the house, the house across the street is a two-story house, but the roof is three stories high. It's not one of those pyramids. So it's about the same. And if this is three stories, once the sun is up, you know, past a very low angle. The light's going to hit them. Yeah. I'm guessing uh, 30 some feet between the house and the building. So that's quite a large, like if you had an urban situation, 30 feet would be the normal. That's like the rear yard size. Okay. It's something to understand. Right. I appreciate it. You had something about the windows, a question? Yeah, because it's three stories high, I wondered if are there windows for the apartments on the back? Side so that they would be above neighbors' yards. So just to down the um, I think you want to enroll this. So I'm going to answer that as best I can. Um, the apartments here and here don't have windows facing west. Okay. The only windows that we have facing west for humanitarian reasons is we have these corridors. We want to put it at the end of the corridor so we get a building and we want, I mean, we put window treatments in anyway, but, you know, I think it'll be no, no, no privacy issue. The, I'll call it the Driveway exit side there is going to be like this one's going to be on the back side of that. Yeah. No, it's going to be like four windows. I mean, we might have uh, an office window on the ground. Oh, you mean like a garage? There are no windows. In fact, when we put the circulation back here, we had to take some windows out. Thank you. Okay. 
I just I, this came up a few meetings earlier. Someone had talked about um, packing for seating room. Mm -hmm. How you know with thirty apartments that we lost to Amazon or wherever so, we're from. How does that work? So we have that. We have that, and uh, again, I'm starting to get on my boards. She says a good patients too. All right, so this is a good one to say that. So here is a lobby. And then we created a kind of uh, tenant area here that has a common room. I don't know if you can see it, but it has the old garden, uh, a bike room that has an outside component. And then what you're asking about, Victoria, right here, there's a nice uh, output behind the elevator that would be the package room and the mail room. And if necessary, that could be key access. But usually now people just have those package boxes or package shelves. So and where would the truck go? That way, that before post the truck, the mail truck. Well, you mail or Amazon or whatever. Well, um, I'm going to have to say right there because they don't want it to stop in the area. Oh, is that the entrance to the building? Because they're going to park as closest to the entrance well, to that so, building. Yeah, so we'll have a mail truck on Fairview, yes. Yeah, definitely. So let me ask the leading question. How about an indent? Would that make everybody yes. happy if you put an indent right there? That'd be very mm -hmm. nice. Would yeah, that be good? Right, so you want, because the Fairview is only a two-lane street now. So we would nice. create a space for um, somebody to drop Loading, off. yes. Okay, yes. then we could leave our garbage collection on. Yeah. Very that'll, that's a great idea. Okay, but uh, all right, so the next time we come, we'll, we'll do an interview. Yeah. Well, let me make sure that DOT is supportive. Okay, we're not going to do an interview. We're not going to do an interview. Allowing for delivery vehicles. Uh, that would be okay with me. I think it's a good idea. I mean, but an end is completed. No, because it wouldn't be. Oh, I see. It would, have, it would have to be deeper than that. Yeah. 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 That would do the last, yeah. to be honest. But we'll do it if you want. What's the distance between the curb and the sidewalk? So it varies. Um, here it's probably it's just five feet, and it's about six feet. Feet. something there. I can see a line widening. And then we have a five foot. So it's about 11 feet there. So we have to. Bump it in a little bit. Yeah. That might be a better spot when they could pull in and park okay, we'll, we'll study that. Yeah. We'll study. The one thing about these blizzards, they want to be as close to the entrance as possible. Yeah. They don't, they don't, they don't, don't like to walk. Yeah. yeah. It's exactly. It's all about time. So one here and how many here? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Any more questions from the planning board? <laughs> I think it's time for the public. Okay. Now, can uh, Chris? I think I'll fish. Okay. Now, now we have. I did ask that we okay. still brought the rendering. We had a, a meeting last week uh, on Tuesday night with the neighbors at. Uh, uh, what's that? What about? What about the new. That's the new. Uh, Where's the arch? It's behind the tree. It, it, no, you can't really see it in the trees. It's on the left of that tree. Just so that we believe that goes directly. Yeah. yeah, I'll let you guys pass it around. Yeah, and let's show the public as Oh, oh, I see it. Oh, the, 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 yeah, they're just they're just walking over the they're not Let's see. Over to the tenants and go with what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And can we pass it around? Yes, to the to the public also. Sure. Yeah, okay. Right here. Okay. Yeah. So, absolutely. can we yeah. have comments now from the public because they're yeah. patiently waiting? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any public comments? It's time. Uh, yeah, I have so. Give me a name. Name. Jennifer Speak. My file. Jennifer. Yeah. Chip. 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 Okay. I'll go five Oakwood. I was up seven Oakwood as well. Land. Um, I have solar on my road. Um, that's this is the house. Um, you can see on Google Maps here. Roof. 
that's the roof of my house, solar panel. This house is going to be torn down, and the project's going to go right here. Meaning, and all this going to shadow your roof. Yeah, you can't get the yeah the east side of it. Yes, the east side, and the sun comes up around. Yes, east is here, right is here, and it comes around. And then there's also, you know, this is my backyard. Um, is it going to shade my backyard? Um, how many? You said there's going to be no windows on the west side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's the yeah, maybe you could. Is your, uh, could you project Google Maps on that? That's what I was on the screen. Wait, wait, wait. When Randall come back, he can do it. Okay. Is your, is your house one story or two story? Two story. Two story. Okay. Yeah, it's right here. So the, the solar panels. Yeah. And this house is going to be. This is part of the right. proposed right. property that's going to be knocked down. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Right. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And the end of your building uh, is how many feet from there? Are, yeah, they're going to be a chunk. You see that? Two houses. They're going to sell it out. It's going to be 30 feet from this house. Yeah. This house. Yeah. This house is one of the feet. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Uh -huh. where, where did the fire department get in fire? She, she met with the fire department. She, she didn't yeah. The fire department. Well, yeah, the applicant met with the fire department, and there's continued conversation, and we'll make sure that that's addressed. And then, what about the sewer? Like, if there's going to be a ton of people living in this building, that's a lot of shit. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna work that out. The, the sewer line runs down. Down the street here from the end of the They're going to need a sewer extension. That's something that the city has. We're still working on that. That's some progress in work. That's a city manager. Yeah. I have things to say. Okay. Great. And your yeah. name? Uh, my name is Sean Allison. I live at 13 Oak Boulevard. I've been running a business in Hudson for 18 years. Been a homeowner on Oak Boulevard for almost eight years, seven and change. Unlike this dude who left 40 years ago. That's very sentimental, but it doesn't mean anything, right? Well, when, you, hang on a second. I'm just going to keep talking. And then, and, and, and what, then, what's your business? Uh, I'm at Nursery and Mulch. I'm 66 out by Village Dodge. So here's the thing. It's very nice of them to be like, oh, well, people can just park on the street. And anybody can do anything on the street. But that's our street. And I don't have a sidewalk in front of my house. So are all the people that they're just voluntarily putting in front of my house all night long, walking up, uh, walking on my lawn while they get out of the passenger side of their car? And let's address the size of Oakwood Boulevard. They're like, oh, we'll just do a traffic study. Okay, cool. Well, my, their Oakwood Boulevard and Parkwood in Glenwood are designed neighborhoods. The reason why these people, and Crystal, I'm shocked uh, because hello? they live in the neighborhood. I'm shocked that she can look at this and not understand this. The reason why you stand on Oakwood Boulevard and look around and see an open street is because it was designed for the people who live there. Every house has a driveway. Every house has a garage. Every house has parking. That's why there's no cars parked on the street. My neighbors are from Honduras. They're renters. It's one house. One house. Five cars. Now, I invite all of you, because I don't now here's 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 like the, the problem with this situation is these guys who are their only focus is money. This whole thing is how much stuff can we cram in this map right here? And how many variables can we jam in your faces and down your throats so that we can squeeze as much money? out of this neighborhood as we possibly can while we put in nothing and show the people who live there no respect. That's my retirement in that house. That dude over there is my neighbor. That's his retirement. That's not theirs to play with this way, first of all. Second of all, Oakwood, Glenwood, and Parkwood, all three of those streets have five ton limits on the vehicles for a reason. They're tiny. Oakwood is the smallest of the three by far. My five, the five cars that my neighbors park, you have to come in the morning. But by the way, we're talking about a street that has no sidewalk, no street lights, has a sidewalk on one side for a quarter of the block. Then it has no sidewalk. It already has no parking any time at the end of the street because the turn gets so tight. Okay, this is a street that despite the fact that there's a five ton limit on the street, the school buses use it. Now, what are you going to do, right? I get it. They're way more than five tons. And I'm not talking about one school bus or two school buses. That's great for her to just toss around 50 and 100. I'm talking about 30 school buses a day, every day in the morning at 730, and 30 or 40 more every day at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Is that in their plan? Because that's the daily reality of living on the street. And Oakwood, I mean, I'm not talking about living on the street. You know what I mean? Uh, and if you come to my block and see what this one house does to traffic, you'll see how totally insane this tumor of a project is. That's all it is. It's just a tumor added onto our neighborhood. And frankly, I've been in Hudson at this point longer than any of the people investing in this thing have been in Hudson. And what I see, what I see is people in Hudson, homeowners in Hudson, who are sick of a planning board and a mayor's office and a governmental apparatus that only builds things for people who are not here. Here's another hotel. Here's a, here's a banquet thing. Here's a thing for this. Here's a 30 unit apartment building. 30 units? Tell me exactly where these people are gonna work. 
Because when I look at Warren Street and I walk up and down Warren Street, I see closing stores. I don't see open stores. I see stores that I've seen here for a long time closed, and I've seen stores that are only here for a cup of coffee closed. So what exactly is going to happen to this building? Market value rent. The problem in, they're, they're going to like pitch this to us. It's like, oh, we're helping the community, right? Because there's a, sh a housing shortage in Hudson. Well, there isn't a housing shortage in Hudson. There's housing. There's no money. There's a market, market value housing in a town where the only jobs that people can get is bartending or working in one of the hotels that seem to get approved without a problem. But everybody that I've heard talk tonight has just sat here and casually tossed away my retirement, my day-to-day -day lifestyle, the lifestyle of my neighbors and the people who actually built this community and made it work, these people coming here to invest in in the first place. And now they just want to come here and act like it's a gift to me. Like it's a gift that they're giving me a parking spot. Oh, we don't have parking for every space. And we anticipate that people will have one car. Well, that's a nice anticipation when you live in Albany, but it's not when you live in 13 Oakwood. And let's address this issue too. When First of all, the fire truck didn't get in the back. This conversation's over, right? I mean, I've been in, I've been in so many fires in the city. It's not even she knows if you've seen my one man show. I've been all over that. There's no way you can get back there with no fire truck. This this conversation's over, right? This is what I'm curious about. They're sitting here acting like this project is some big gift, like we owe them some debt of gratitude for bringing this to our neighborhood or something like that. But what I want to know is. When was the last time that the, the building plans for Hudson were updated and approved? Because I have a feeling that the last time these laws that they're basing this absolutely malignant project on were written before there was an internet. That's what I'm betting. You, you quite, quite correctly asked, shouldn't people have their own parking spot? Hell yes, they should. Shouldn't there be visitors parking? Yes. Why should it be my burden and my neighbor's burdens to provide parking for the people that are paying rent to them? Why is that? How is that fair? What is going to happen? I want them to do a study on the value. What's going to happen to the value of my house when they put it this unbelievable eyesore at the end of the building? They're, it's going to be nice. It's going to have trees. Yet yeah, now, what about in 10 years? How many of you think that the last five years of Hudson are going to continue? How many of you think that this money train is just going to keep rolling? And even more importantly, how many of you think that this money train actually is for Hudson? It isn't. It's for a very small number of people sitting right there. Because I still see people disenfranchised all over Hudson. Bliss Towers, all up and down Columbia. I don't see any of those people walking around these stores here. So let's have a planning board that builds for Hudson, responsible planning, that takes care of the neighborhood as it was designed to be lived in by the people who live in it. That's what Hudson is for. It's not so people can come here from Brooklyn and have great weddings. It's not so people can come here and do apple picking and talk all their bullshit all day long. It's because people who want to live in a small town in a community where they know the people around them and have ties to them can live a comfortable, peaceful life. And this project is anathema to that in every single possible way, except for one, putting money in Crystal's pocket, this dude's pocket, and the other dude's pockets. And the rest of it for us, thank you for listening. Audience questions. I have a question. I'll be back. That was passionate. I'll be back. That's for sure. Thank you. Um, if you come back, which we well, I mean, with open arms. I just want to be clear that I was getting crystal pink. Okay, but I just want if if you come back, we welcome you with open arms. 
but you cannot attack it again, please. Yeah. You're talking well, to us with I appreciate that. residents like you. I appreciate that. Hear you. I think you should come to Oakwood Boulevard okay. at 731. I've been Oakwood Boulevard a hundred times. So I just want you to understand. Fire. Yeah, this is a, you know, this is every, this is a house for everyone. I no you. attack. I won't let them attack you, and I don't want you to attack. We you you disagree and you. treat everybody with respect. Yeah, but we do hear. You. We hear you, and thank cool. you. For coming. Thank you. And, and um, you. Um, and but remember, you speak for a lot of people, but you're the only one speaking. Well, well that's not you. I think not. <laughs> <laughs> first, I want to say something. Um, the planning board. If the code says that it is allowed, correct me if I'm wrong. We can't say it. it's not allowed, right? Right. right. So the, the planning board, um, there's a the legislative body of Hudson, the county council, adopted a zoning law. The zoning law allows certain new fields to a certain district. Um, the code enforcement officer made an interpretation that this use was allowed on these particular lots. So the planning board is bound by that decision. Um, so the planning board's job is not to decide whether this is a good use for the lot or not. Uh, the common council already made that decision. And the planning board's job is to, is to see if the project that's proposed can be done um, safely and appropriately and in accordance with the code on this particular lot. So things like traffic access, parking, well, environmental lighting. impact, right, is right. what's relevant to us, right? The Positive impact of the project, negative environmental impact, and and we do take that into consideration. I've said it more than once. Do not come here with your project and not be community minded and neighborly. But the code allows this project. So it wasn't like we allowed it to go. No, I did that. Yeah. So maybe you should show up. But here's the thing, like, like you're That's saying, like, change. here's the, the, the problem with what you're saying, frankly, is that you're like, well, if the code allows it, then we have to do it. But no, no, no. no, no, no. That's what I said. Yeah, exactly. Code, we have to review it. Just okay. to comply with the code, so, and so that's it can right. be done without negative impact Fair on the community. Fair enough. So that's Here's important. what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. The, the code that you're talking about, like, like it, it's, it wasn't written when Hudson was incorporated, right? It was updated over time because times change. Like one day there was a dude in a wagon with a horse riding up and down Warren Street, right? And then one day there was. And then one day that all these changes come along, and from time to time, people are like, hey, you know, we need to update the we need to update our situation here because it is not the same as when this law was was when these things were written. Now I understand you have to you have to uh, operate under the rules that are in place for you right now. I mean, I appreciate that. But what I'm saying is I think what people would appreciate as homeowners in this town who basically just feel totally neglected by everything that's happening and all the burden that's put on us, including taking care of the sidewalks and everything that most municipalities assume for themselves out of tax burdens. Uh, Your issues with the common council. You want the donor change? My, my point is you can update these so that things like community standards can come into play. You're talking about essentially putting a 14 unit home on one lot in a neighborhood full of one and two family home. Like, in what universe does that even make sense? And, and no truck, no matter what anybody thinks right now, with any cars parked on Oakwood Boulevard, no truck is gonna make a turn out of that factory. Not ever. It's gonna be, and I, I, I'm gonna demonstrate this to everyone here. One car, one car parked in the wrong place on Oakwood Boulevard will be a problem you can't solve. So now we're going to take comments from other people. Sure. Okay. Is it okay? Absolutely. Uh, so we're going to move on. Uh, uh, we have... No, no, no. I'm just... Yes. Next. Yes. Uh, name? Fair 109 Fair Road. Yeah. 16 Paddock Place. 109 Fair Road. We want to let the address. But I think we do have 61 in Boulevard. Anyway. Um, two things. First of all, on the on the south and west side of Parker Boulevard, my property is about this project. Oh, okay. okay. On the 
Parkwood side, there's a house, 123 Parkwood. And I talked to the gentleman, and he's totally in agreement with this project. He has no problem. Unfair. Um, the other thing <clears throat> with this is that Oakwood Boulevard is a major problem with traffic, with park cars, not traffic. Okay? Every house on Oakwood Boulevard has a driveway, mm -hmm. and I believe they all have a garage, maybe not all, okay? Yeah, a back. back it's, it's, everybody could probably pull three to five cars and park them in their driveways that they own. Your problem is, this, is this gentleman alluded to, there's people living, multiple families in those apartment houses, and they're parking on the street, okay? That's the problem. What he's still alluding to, too, the driveway is for this particular project where it's going to come out. There's no parking. There's no parking up at that end, okay? As you're turning towards Fairview. Now, and actually, there's no, you can get in and out of there. It's not a problem. And the other thing, the other point I just want to make real quick is I live in a park of Boulevard for 37 years. I was in my bad place before that, okay? So I lived in the city basically my whole life over the last 10 years. I know the city, I know those boulevards, okay? And and just a point of interest is when the city, when all these, when all your codes, which I know you have to go by, it's chairman of this committee for years, I was sat on the committee, from the city fathers and somebody's infinite wisdom, from pro renters to 127 Fairview Avenue, which is the last house in Hudson, is all zone commercial, okay? That's called GCT, General Commercial. Mm -hmm. When you go into your code book, you notice, when you go into the code book, it refers you that what, what can you do up there? It refers you back to General Commercial, I'm sorry, Central Commercial, which is Warren Street. Then it also reverts you to R1234, which is all the residentials. So for that intensive purposes, those properties could be put whatever you want. And why were they done? I can only speculate they were put up there because those were the only building lots in the city for commercial, you know, endeavors. In this case, in this this particular project, there's no one in the city. I and mean, where else would you put something like this? Plus, it's out there, it's on Fairview Avenue. Um, just another uh, <clears throat> couple of points is the park. Um, the pocketbook factory was in front of you, has been approved. And there's going to, that is basically called a hotel. There's 40 rooms in there. And you approve the parking. And I believe the gentlemen who owns it are going to rent some property from the county. It's about a half a block away. Anybody knows, remembers this stuff is correct. Okay. Um, also, you've got a uh, hundred unit apartment going up on 7th Street. It's all being built right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's authorized for 40 parking spots. He bought a spot. They bought a lot mm -hmm. over on 6th and Washington. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Here's my point. This is all been approved by the board. Mm -hmm. Those people are not going to go to them lots and walk a block to park in those places. They're going to be parking all over the streets, which they can because they're a registered New York State vehicle. Can't stop them from parking. Other than when we built a center fire station, 7th Street was made no parking on one side because of the fire truck. Okay. That's that's one thing. The other thing is you also have three breweries that have been approved through here within I'd say two blocks of each other. There's two of them on us on uh, that's uh, Columbia. Columbia and the one over on you. I do believe, correct me if I'm wrong. Out of those three buildings, which probably have an occupancy rating between six to eight hundred people, you got four parking spots in the alley behind the one on the street. Everybody else is on street parking. It was approved by this board. Okay. And I just, you know, it was approved. And um, so now you turn around, they're gonna put this project up here with now how many apartments? 30 with 20. Seven parking site on site on site. Okay, and my point is, <laughs> it's past practice, it's been approved. For whatever reasons the board approved is parking for all these other spots. Matter of fact, tonight is supposed to be another hearing for another one, 
And I sat here about four or five months ago, and their occupancy is, you look at another brewery is going to come in front of you, has an occupancy of 430 people. Where, where's that part? Are you aware of the Common Council? Eliminated the parking requirement in the code. Oh, I know they did. That was my next. I was here. I was on here. We had the one for three. For every three chairs you had in your building, you had to have one parking spot. Okay? The council, with their infinite wisdom, did away with this about four years ago. So now you kind of got the wild west. Okay? So my point is you get all these places, they're on street parking. Got somebody who wants to do a project, <laughs> they got on site parking. You know, yes, there's going to be some overflow onto the street, and there's no question about it for parking. I don't believe it's going to affect Oakland because there's nowhere to park on Oakland. I agree with it. Okay. There is parking, but nowhere to park. No, no. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no parking. There's parking, but it's all, it's the track. You know, you got to go like this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's up to the city. And that's what, you know, the resident, that's what you have to do. Yes, they could make some one way streets out of that. Or it's made no parking on the street at all. That, well, that's. They already got to like that. We can do that. You can't interfere. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's, there's a lot of things, but the city, there's no, there's no, again, I grew up there, I lived here my whole life. And yes, the traffic has gotten worse and worse. And again, this project with 30 units. It's not, and they do your traffic studies. That's not going to create any more, you know, congestion up there than it already is. Those buses are a problem in the afternoon from probably 10 to 3 to about 10 after. Okay. In the morning. In the morning, they turn in there. And um, you can't change those routes. They both have been like that. And, uh, you cannot go to, uh, to school. To me, they should go up and out. Get the high school from down at nine, but they don't. I understand because the congestion up there. So um, that's you know, pretty much what I was going to say. Um, but that's pretty much it. I mean, you got. I understand. I understand where you're coming. We had a wrestle when I was here about the park. You know, we had a wrestle because it was a gray area. Also, because it's municipal. What the city needs is a couple of parking garages, which we can find up there. With that gentleman said, no, right, they can get no parking, but truck, you can't restrict somebody from somebody got a New York State license plate, okay? And the registered vehicle, you can't stop them from parking. Uh, up there might be a little different story, okay? Because street is narrow, but it's not. And the problem is, it's not the people, there's enough parking there, but it's the people that are, I'll give you a prime example. As soon as you turn off of Oakwood on the paddock place, you make a left on a paddock, okay? Mm -hmm. In the last three years, those houses were sold. I counted 10 cars as soon as you make that turn. That. And why? Because there's multiple families living in these. And that's where all those cars are. Oh, bigger families. With Which, again, it's not something the, the city's got. There's no money to try to fix that. You know? So, that's what it was. Can, can you. Yeah, so you said at a lot of points uh, about the project and about parking, I, but I, I don't have a consensus. Do you feel that in that area that this is a appropriate project? I, 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 yes, yeah. those blocks have been empty, other than all these fish fryers there for about 12 or 13 years. Okay, on the one corner, and the other, the other house was there. But what do you do? Somebody's coming in. My whole point. I tried to come in front of the board a couple of years ago. I wanted to do something with one lot, and you know, it went down the tubes. Okay, I am speaking that. Okay, but you got to remember, people are people pay the taxes, and that land is zoned commercial. That land could be a gas station right now. Perfect. Go with living there. That's not your point. You talk about your point. Stop it. Go okay. back. Okay, I'm telling you know. Yeah. You know, okay. 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 Well, my point is, my point again, yes. What else would you want to see there? You can go through it. It can be basically almost anything. Okay. Can go there. Okay. There's housing at all here. Okay. Now you got you know, and I get tired of the money. People do things just for money. 
listen, you can't go up there. And I'm going to take the elevator. I'm going to have my soapbox. <laughs> you know, okay. this, this, this project, okay, is not, <laughs> it's on or pay. All these other projects I just mentioned to you, or all the other housing projects in this city, all have pilot programs. Payment in lieu of the tax. Okay? And the only way that they can do what they're doing with the pilot programs is to, to uh, you, you want affordable housing or, or low to moderate income housing. Nobody can afford to go out and spend $15 million and get four or $500 a month rent. So they go and get the pilot program. They go and get tax credit. This project is, <laughs> he's doing it on his own. He's paying for the project. So, and that's what it is. So, and the word isn't market. These are off. Now you got me going. <laughs> okay, you got low to moderate income housing in the city. Okay, we can which is all subsidized mm -hmm. by our tax dollars, one way or the other. Okay, then you have on Warren Street. Everybody did a great job in the city fixing up, trying to get an apartment for under twenty five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So now what you have is you got in the middle. Who's in the middle? You know, people working in the middle. Somebody who's retired. That's what this project, you know, is aimed at. We understand. And it's given them, again, you're up in what we call the Boulevard area, okay? Mm -hmm. And Hudson is a destination for people. People want to come in and you know, live in the city and have a place similar to this. We understand. Okay. You're definitely for the problem. We do understand. <laughs> Back to the point. Okay, now we want to go. Is it? Okay, how many people want to speak tonight? Just one more? Yes. Okay. Everyone can speak, but I wanted to know if there were several more because I have to limit it. We'll be here all night. Yeah, anybody else? Oh, okay, so how many people want to speak tonight? One, two. Okay. Is that it? That's it. Okay, so sir, and your yes, name? Sir. My name is Brian Nicholson. Okay, four or against. Start, start that <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, born and raised in Hudson. I live on four old people. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of concerns among your residents of um, Spring Street, Glenmead, Crawford, and Oakland of City. Obviously, a lot of things have been hashed over. You know, keep tossing it around, pulling out, coming in. The safety is a big concern of, of a lot of people. They have children, parking closures, cars. It's not Little Bureau's fault. You know, it's, it's just what exists right now. But it's something that's got to be looked at and considered because you have, you know, people, Sean came in, you know, Chip's here, you know, we have kids. They, they came up here and they bought a house and uh, it's something that obviously people are passionate about. I mean, I'm a reasonable man, but I'm going to speak for, you know, everyone here that's involved. You know, I have legitimate concerns and, you know, the architects have addressed a lot of things. Aesthetically, I mean, it's, it's nice. You know, it is. I can't deny that. But there are serious issues. Got a lot of people out in concerns. I know you guys are volunteers. I'm not going to pay all that for them. Well, we do have an engineer that's looking exactly. diligently at the place. Oh, yes. And we have a, one of the best attorneys out there. Seriously. <laughs> uh, so, um, and that's the change in the planning board. It's not just the residents, but we got help. Yeah. Good help, professional help. And there's some local points that I can go over there, you know. You want to send them in to us? Yeah. <laughs> you want to eat? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you can yeah, talk, but I, yeah. I'm going to let him talk, but I just also wanted to know after he finishes telling them to us, could he still send them in? I mean, I'm not going to remember. Yeah, right. you would have never do it. That's that's all people ask. And that's what reasonable people do, you know. So, but you know, safety, traffic, traffic, parking, parking is a serious issue. I mean, you can walk out there certain hours of the day. I mean, you know, there's cars all over the place. There again, it's not my fault for the bureau's fault. But you people are renting rooms, and they're not parking in driveways. They're on the street. You make the roads and taxi stand. There's cars all over the place. There's buses that come in from 6 30 to 8. There's teaching. There's mom and dad bringing their children to school. You know, they're not 
Yeah, it's it's open or the you know, and the sins lives on the mind. You know, we talked the other night. These are things that exist, and these are real things that we can all and consider. It's not that. One of the things I would like for you to do is to email us your concerns because I don't think I've gotten an email. Absolutely. And and you too, sir. I you know the best way to do is to send your concerns in writing, and we post. Oh, them I'm an excellent writer. Yeah, send them to me, <laughs> chair of the planning board, and we will get them posted, and everybody gets a chance to read them over and over. I appreciate and that. And we'll send them out to our attorney and the consultant, so that when the consultant is, you know, making comments or reviewing a plan, he's taking those considerations. I you appreciate know, at that. Heart. Oh, if we don't know, we would, you know, yeah. we have to, okay? Yeah. Okay. Ryan, Ryan or Kathy, refresh my memory about parking regulations on Oakwood. Gene, what is it? Oakwood, believe it or not, you can park on both sides. It's of the street. Part, part, no, part no, of that's line. not true. There's no yeah. parking yeah. any time at the phone pole down by that curve. Yeah. 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 What he's talking about. But she can't. Oakwood's a free fall. Oakwood's free for all. Parkwood is I. Glenwood is one side. 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 No, on Oakwood. Yeah. No. Yeah. There's no, there's no fire hydrant. There's a no fire hydrant on the other side yeah. of the project. It's where everybody, where we go out and line up. There's no parking there. Okay. There's no sign telling you not to. No, 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 there is no. So there is parking there. It's just that people don't do it. And as soon as there are parks, they park there. They will. They're using the drive. It's like that. It's right. Overflow came out to that park. Out the local, right? Yeah, I was like, tell me. Mm -hmm. And the point is, nowhere, nowhere, nowhere to park yes. between the end of this property, right? And tomorrow, okay. Place for one park, there's a fire iron on the bottom pole on that one house, right? Okay, and he is going to actually make a parking area there for himself. Okay, now we're going to thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, ma'am, I'm Michelle Pierrot. Uh, I'm Michelle Pierrot. Sorry, are you, are you related to that? If you're related to, to that, yeah, that side of the room. <laughs> I lived in the house on the corner of Oakland for eight years. I recently moved to our childhood home at Riverland Road, so I'm still, you know, still nearby. And yes, parking has always been, been an issue and a problem uh, there. And I wish there was something the city could do with one side, because I still use that, that road coming to Oakwood every day in and out of Oakwood with the trucks, what you're talking about, parked on both sides of Oakwood. So that's, that's a real issue that I don't know who would look at that or, or, or what could be done about that, since the land and the parkwood are both one side only. I don't understand why we would not, never got that one side only. Calling out of there, and my next door neighbor was not here tonight, who, who was the next door neighbor, uh, told us when we were at the, um, the meeting last week that he made the race five minutes. His driveway is on Fairview. His house is next to that one. He said maybe five minutes at a time to get out. You have to be attention. But the whole thing since that gas station reopened has been scary, right? But it really, um, it's patience. And yes, the school buses are an issue coming and going, parents coming and going. What I really wanted to say was this was really done thinking about what could be done to help the community. And wait, just wait, listen to me for a minute. I've been in education for 51 years. I'm still working, I'm still in education. I got here years ago, I moved away, came back. We have a hard time recruiting young teachers to come and live in the Hudson community because the rents are astronomical. When I came back from New York, I thought, oh, I'm gonna rent a place, you know, work straight till I find something. They were higher than my Manhattan rents for less space. And but you know something else young people don't like? 
Like Hudson is composed of a lot of two to four families. And young people don't want to be that close to you. They would prefer an apartment like setting. Absolutely. You know, that's that's something I'm noticing about young people. In other words, instead of going into a two family house or four family, they rather I don't want you hearing me. I don't want to see when you're living. I don't want you to know anything about me. And, yeah. and I understand and what you're saying. In half the community, when teachers stop moving into the community, I'm sure when half the people in the room grew up, your teachers lived in the community. They went to That's games, true. they went to the place, they, you know, they got to know people. Now, so many do not live in the community. They don't connect with the kids or their families, which is, is a tragedy to me. The other thing is, I talk to other people who employ professionals, young professionals, and they have the same problem. I don't have that. Uh, hey, Sean, please. I, don't look at him. I don't know him, but he's a little honest. Sean? I'm listening to her speech. As an educator, she's not looking at her. What? No. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. Don't talk here, please. So, so one of the positives that I see as the project is developing was giving young professionals an offer for people that are kids coming back to town, you know, who want to come back to town, who don't want to live with mommy and dad anymore because they're adults, and had an opportunity to live in housing in, in an area that is preferable. You know, and to be able to pay rent and have a long time. So I just wanted to say there is a benefit. It is, in my opinion. Thank you. I just wanted to speak quickly as a uh, resident of this. Oh, okay. Entering on this project since I've been thrown under the bus a couple of times here this evening. I live at 106 Glenwood. Uh, my husband and I own 54 Parkwood and 36 Oakwood as well. So we are entrenched in the boulevards. Uh, I love the boulevards. I, I think it's a fantastic place where families are in Hudson more so than other neighborhoods. Um, the boulevards have become walkable the last couple of years. People are out and about more than they ever have been. I think this project is perfect. I think it checks off a lot of boxes. It checks off the housing needs here in Hudson. It takes a commercial space that could be offensive fast food restaurant type of place, pushing bad smells into the neighborhood or bringing a ton of traffic in more than the 30 cars that we're contemplating daily. Um, I think this is a good balance for the neighborhood and I would be on this project if I didn't support it. Thank you, Christian. You don't live in Hudson. You live in Hudson. Uh, so <laughs> you live right here. <laughs> okay, uh, any more comments from the public? Okay, we have one young lady. Um, could you stand up and tell us your name? Oh. Why don't you? Oh, you can't come back. Um, my name is Sally. That's Sally. Um, I'm just wondering. I I am an education. I'm just wondering where are we going for rent? Where are we thinking? Oh, you're asking curious. women. You're talking about us. Curious. Okay. Oh. So your question is, you would like to know what what the oh. rent's gonna? It's gonna be. I think it's. They said fair market. Which is like that. Which is what? Which is whatever it, it whatever it's gonna be when it's finished. Fair market value today may not be what's fair market value tomorrow. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, it's not gonna be low income. It's not gonna be subsidized income. It's going to be and and I think they have a class called working workforce. Workforce is not gonna be that in this fair market. And that's going to be determined once it's built. Okay. So what's which your opinion? I think it was the point of. I think I think fair market. Did you mean to say it's moving and built? If it's built, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. He just corrected me. I appreciate it. You don't have to correct me. He'll correct me. You're not. Okay. Any more questions from the public? Okay, but Jenny. Jenny. Okay, any more questions from the public? Oh, wait a minute, Vicky, I have somebody online. Oh, somebody online. Okay. Hi, this is Vicky Daskaluri. I'm uh, with the council. I'm a council member of the fifth ward where the project is going to be. Um, I just wanted to say that the concerns of my constituents are, are absolutely valid. The traffic is a nightmare, especially in the morning with the school buses. Um, 
it's very congested area and a lot has to do with the green port, how much it has uh, boomed over the years, especially now. Uh, parking will be a problem as well. And let's not forget the boulevards, uh, especially Oakwood and uh, part of Parkwood, have no sidewalk. So that means all these people that they will be parking or they will be and stepping off the car, they will be going, they will be stepping on people's uh, property. So mm -hmm. I don't know how that is, you know, that is not okay. Uh, we don't want to, have to create something where people are going to start fighting on other streets, you know. So um, what I wanted to say is that I really think that if the board is considering to pass the project to at least uh, reduce the amount of units so they correspond to each parking spot that they have. And also the developer has to do their uh, due diligence uh, to try to provide um, do all what homework needs to be done for having a traffic device in the intersection there. Okay. Vicky, Thank you. Us, Vicky, could you also send us that comment in writing? For sure. We would yeah. like to have that in writing. And everybody... Yes. Could you follow it up with a letter to the planning board chair? It would be very nice. Okay, Parker. thank you. Thanks. Okay. Parker Boulevard's got sidewalks on both sides. Just Parkwood? No, no. no. And as does Glenwood, only Glenwood does only on uh, down to the intersection of Parkwood. Well, on the, on, on the north side, Glenwood is all the way down from Fairview. Down to Colwood, yeah, that, down right, by right. Oakdale. Well, Park, on the opposite Park, sides, it goes down just below the intersection of Parkwood. Parkwood Boulevard has sidewalks on both sides. Oakwood Boulevard only has sidewalks on the north side, maybe halfway, like four or five. Anyway, yards. Like right at my house, like third, okay. across the left, like third stage. Whatever. Point of interest, just so everybody knows. Mm -hmm. I thought you might like this real fast. Oh, okay. there you go. The county fairground used to be in Hudson, New York. They run Fairview Avenue, Paddock Place, and the half mile racetrack was, yes, it was a and Parkwood. That was the half mile racetrack. And Grant's page were up on Fairview. Yes, they're their building. Then they moved it to Chad. I can't even imagine that being there, but I guess you can. All the foundations for the orange barns are down in the gully line. Anyway. Oh, the gully. Okay, would you like to speak then? You're waving it in. No, no, she's she's waving it to her husband. Wait a minute. Oh, we can just tell you to stop. <laughs> Any more public? Any more people from the Okay. I want to thank everybody for coming out for and against is what we need to hear. As I said, we have a consultant. He will take all we take it and he takes it into consideration when he's actually making recommendations for the Okay. And um, the builders are here. I know that they're listening also. Mm -hmm. Right? You want to come to me over here? So, how much time will you need? Um, I know you have to go do your traffic study and a few other things. Will you have it to next week or should we continue this to June? Right. Not, don't come in May. So. Well, well, it's after that. Oh, I mean, can you get it? Here's a question. I mean, I certainly think we can make progress. It depends a little bit on, you know, our conversation to like how much is conditionally approvable versus how much we need to have done the next meeting. I definitely think we can have a substantial amount of progress. Um, so we can, there's value, I think, in having a meeting okay. so, um, to I see do, and really check things off, you know, that kind of thing. Well, a meeting and a public hearing, I mean, we could extend the hearing to June and maybe it'll we'll work. Workshop changes next month, or we could. Um, I don't know how to use all that. Well, I think it's more a question of what would be more productive. Should we have a meeting with your friend? So you have to have these done by May 7th. One week prior? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So we have about a week for late on the 15th of Yeah, 15th. Two weeks. 
I don't, I just think it might be more useful to take that time to address the concern and then come back in June. I mean, like I said, we definitely make progress on the engineering comments. I think that a lot of what I saw don't necessarily take a lot of time. Um, so I don't see maybe we can touch base in like a week. Yeah, well, it's just a question of are we continuing the hearing, just the hearing for May or June? Can we continue the hearing that progress isn't sufficient to address? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we uh, can I get a motion on continuing yes. the public hearing for the boulevards until May 14th? Yeah. Second? I'll second. May 14th. Yeah. I'll second. Yeah. All in favor? Uh, Any opposed? All right. Can you write it? Send it to us in writing? Sure. Oh, we have to move on. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to what we call uh, new business. But before we do that, can we take a minute of break? Yes, please. Well, we're going to take a, uh, a five minute break. <laughs>
Okay, I'm calling the meeting back to order at 8.41 p.m. Okay, now, new business. How was that? Lucille Drive. Six Lucille Drive. Are you here today? How are you? Good. Thank you. How's everyone? Good. How are you? I just want to say, um, I just want to remind you of the future said everything to the planning board chair. Also, well, too. I'm sorry about that. So everything has to go to me because I'm uh, this is Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, do you have any plans for us? I I just have a piece of plot line adjustment. Oh, okay. Not anybody here is complicated with the. Everything else. Never say never. Yes. Okay. A lot of one Give one episode. A couple of these. Oh, thank you. I want to get Susan. You want to? Yeah, I'm sure I Are you back? Okay, so go ahead. Tell us what you're looking for. Oh, excuse me, this is the original one. There was no changes to it, right? Uh, this was the original application, I believe. Okay, right here. Really, that's what I'm looking for. This is basically the, yeah, you look at it like this. Right. Here's the existing line. Yeah. Okay. And there's a. That's upside down. It just needs to drive yeah, to the and that's the backyard. That's the backyard. Yeah. So did that. This is no, no. It needs to drive this way. Yeah. And uh, Harry Howard Avenue is this way. Okay. So tell us what you're doing. That's upside down. That is the same drive. Okay, go ahead. Run. 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 This is the existing one. We got a new 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 one. We got Indicating that he's given permission to do that. Um, I he hasn't given a, a letter, so I mean, but, he would have to sign the battery yeah. agreement, yeah. Which yeah. Would get yeah. 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 I guess I was trying to work that out for. Uh, I know we're in a transition time. period here about that. Yeah, yeah. So um, and we're working on it, but we're getting there faster than um normal tonight. We'll be talking about a lot of stuff. So um, how much does he owe me? Yeah. Right. Actually, six. Yeah. 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 Here's, this is for sale. This is for the, the, uh, the seller contract. Yeah, yeah. if you want for the seller. Yeah. Um, and how many lots you got? Two, 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 two. Uh, uh, moving one line to one line to none. It's, 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 just give you, yeah, right here. Right 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 so no new lots are created. Okay. Just no, no. a chunk from one lot to the other lot. So there's yeah. no new building contention. No new building lot. So it's a lot, a lot, lot line. Adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's a hundred dollars. So you make a check payable to the city of Hudson. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And on the memo, you put um your address, lot line adjustment. That's what it's for. You have to take it to the treasurer's office. Is that 25 feet? Yeah. Okay. I'll make sure that we'll send you an email on this. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we're going to give you, um, we're going to do a little escrow on this. 
Yes. Okay, we'll decide. Yeah. So the, the potential I mean, buyer, yeah, I mean, we they can't yeah, really come here to do the, the lot line adjustment. So they would like that to just be done before they buy the property. If you see this right about right here, it's not long. So they want to put fence basically right down this. So in order to get that out of this one point, it's going to sway all the back like this. So in order to get on this point up here to have enough to put the fence down that volume line, they also want to put the fence up on their neighbor's property. All right. So then the neighbor was like, oh, I have okay. to go Property, so we would only put it together. Then what happens if you guys sell the property right. and then somebody says, No, we don't want this fence there? But the fence is not good. Does it just give it back or is it make us a fence? No, John, could you, John, could you uh, use this paper and show us all what you're doing here? You can use mine to give it back to me. It is basically this. Whole area in here is a two acre building. Is that your property? No, that's uh, the rider's property, which is right next to ours. Um, and it's basically a gully, a drainage area that everything kind of drains into, and it drops off maybe 35, 40, 50. Oh, so it feet has like those lines for topography. It shows that it's dropping off down. No, no he, didn't, he didn't show the concrete. That's something to talk about. Um, yes, it, it drops way down and actually comes out all the way down by like the old Charles Williams steel down by Mill Street. It drops all the way down. Yeah. To is, this, is this property adjoining the bike path? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. This is, this would be the bike path. I'm sorry. The yeah, bike yeah. path would be yeah. back here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, where, where you the, the bike path is down here. Oh, I can't vision. Oh, you'll see it. It's John. No, no. They own this. It's like a major parcel in here that's. They bought it with a couple of other parcels. And it's on the left. It's on the left. And 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 it's on the left. Uh, yeah, she like yeah. right down that. Okay. So he's in the back. That's he's talking about a lot, yeah. open lot. That's the back half. Oh, okay. in, in, in. Yeah. Is everybody so doing on silk I'm, I'm super familiar with this house. You should, you should. I, I pass by it every day on the bike path. Okay, so. I think yeah. the fence actually needs to be back. The bike, like people could just like go into the yard. Like every other house has a fence. Yeah, like, 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 yeah, um, being offensive to allow offense is safer for the people on the bike path. It actually was just in. He's doing a lot line. We all got some one talk. He's doing a lot line and just seeing that something to do with the fence. And so they to be able to put it all in the fence. All the And it's just wood. So there's nothing there. So one thing one thing that I want the planning board to understand every so we have requirements in the subdivision law for what needs to be on the map. Because this is so simple, the planning board should decide if it wants to waive a lot of those requirements. But one thing I would just want to confirm is that there's no utilities or connections or anything in the area that's going to be conveyed because that would, that causes issues later. No, there's no right. But you guys should decide whether you want the Tobo lines and the neighbor names and all those other things that we typically see on a subdivision plot or whether you can right. and if we're gonna waive something, please everybody understand. Other people are looking at what we're doing for one another. So mm -hmm. if we do it for one week, you know, we have to have a reason why we're gonna do it for this one and may not do it for the next, or we're gonna do it the same for everybody. So yeah. we have to be consistent in the way we make our decisions, please. Okay. I mean, even if we know the person, like the person, live with the person, we still have to be consistent. Yeah. 
I do think it's sensible that the lot that they're taking from, they one, already have permission, although we'd like to see the letter, and two, it's just unused, it's really unbuildable woods that they're talking about that they would expand into. It's not like the easement onto another property that makes it more difficult, which is why I think it's an actually a different circumstance someone else couldn't go to. Okay, so this is pretty like unusual. a vacant lot. It's a vacant lot. It's just unbuildable wood, right? vacant lot. Right. Who owns private. it? Uh, David and Maureen Ride. But it's, it cannot be built on. Do you, do you, well, this, you know that for, for, this portion, this portion could be built on. Anyway. Are you, do you know that for sure? Yes. How I do you know? I've been in that area multiple times. I know, but how do you know they can't build it? Yeah, it's a it's a tip it's, almost. Yeah. But that does that mean it can't be built on? Yeah, yeah. generally. Can yeah. they build a house? Yeah. Okay, yeah. they built a house. Now, if you come down Harry Howard and you go behind John L. Edwards. And remember, it's a cliff down there. They built the house on there. That's right. They sure did. And it's on a cliff. So that does not mean because of the shape of it, they can't be built on. But we they did find a flat spot for that. <laughs> yeah, but the rest of it was downhill. Right. And but you I know, I remember not, the zoning giving them the I right. Don't think this lot has any yeah. sort of but I don't want us to say something that's not so. I don't want the claim for to make an assumption that a lot cannot be built on, and we have no evidence of that being true. What if the owner said in the letter that they have the exactly. future intent of building on the spot? Yeah, yeah. it has to say it. Well, it's how much does it be, matter if the lot's buildable or not? Are, it's we're, still we're, being, just, we're just concerned about the area that's being changed. I just brought up and the, the subject because I'm bringing up the subject size. because I don't want us to start saying things we don't know. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> don't say it can't be built on well, when I you're not sure. But we're that, talking was, about the piece that's changing. It would still be a bit of a lot, whether you know that 25 feet or not. It's not going to change, change any of what, whether it wouldn't change anything with that because the square footage is still more than enough to build a for a buildable lot on that. Other so lot. we need a letter from the owner of that lot anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So in that letter, he, you know, he's going to put everything in. Yeah, he's to I you don't know. think a future intent to build or not is, is relevant. Is yes. I think what's relevant is making sure that anything that's being changed is not going to impact um, you know, utility or flood, any kind of issue, and then here, making sure you're not creating a non conforming lot because you don't want to on the opposite side, yeah. But if he, if a portion of that lot can be built on mm -hmm. and another portion can't, then you're going to create a non conforming lot if you, well, you're, so you're saying you want to make sure that this lot exactly. is exactly not. I don't know, I don't know what it is now. Mm -hmm. I want to know what it is from the owner. That's what we want to know. We want to know what is this? Is it a buildable lot? Is it, you know, what is it? Yeah. But he's telling us that and he's allowing you. I want to know what it is. Okay. I mean, I think that's information we should have. Is it easy that he's giving us going to sell it to you? So he's giving us an easement. It's not an easement. It's ownership. It's ownership. Wait a minute. What do you mean? He's going to, you're going to pay to get the, I don't understand. This is this is being sold from one to the other. Yeah. Oh, so so one. he's he's giving you that piece that giving the yes yeah, so he's you're selling you the you're piece. Paying for it. Uh, you're paying him for all intents and purposes. You're giving him something. Yeah, he's buying this little piece of land. Yeah, right. Yeah. Maybe so right. So so this lot line is being moved from here to there. Oh, okay. The only thing you really want to be concerned of is that when you do that, that this is still a Conforming lot with the city uh, zoning standards. Yeah. Okay, and who would tell us that? It's in the cold. So, it, it's, it's I mean, who would tell? One us? thing we normally have on the plans is a zoning table. Yeah. So you would have a table that says District R1, you know, and you would label the lots, lot one, lot two, and you say lot one is this start. Yeah, but then in the table, and then this at the end, and it still meets the frontage with, so you do a whole table showing that it meets all the minimum requirements of the, of the R1 district. So there would be existing at the moment. So for this yeah. block, you would say, for example, it's two acres existing today, tomorrow it's going to be 1.75. Okay. It's you know, the, yeah. This lot is, you know, 1.75 today, tomorrow it's going to be three. And your setbacks are increasing, so that's not an issue. So yes. just document it. Yep. Okay. 
That's like good. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're going to confirm Random. the utilities. Mm -hmm. And confirm, right. So zoning table, confirm utilities, and being so, ready to waive the other requirements is not a point. What other requirements? Well, like topography. You yeah. don't need the topo line on this. He's not proposing to build at this time. Um, Jeff, what are we waiting? Why are we waiting? Well, that's my that's my question. <laughs> <You're waiting. laughs> Because nothing is being constructed and it's um, so we have to use, you know, we have to have a reason so that we can yeah. use that same reason if somebody comes up to, uh, of this to us. Okay. okay. Yep. So we're, we're waiving it because nothing is being built on the other lot once we get the letter saying that nothing is going to be built. No, 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 not, not the other lot because we that can still be the lot in this space. In the space that he's yeah. taking. It doesn't matter what land drainage does any that matter. No, not necessarily. Um, I would ask the surveyor to get some light arc cobalt and show another plant it's readily available. So just what was it light arc cobalt. Um, they should know that can be either turned on or but at that point, point, now with plenty more, now what the total looks like, you know, this seems training. We're trying to set precedent here that this is what we're going to do with that. Okay. Right? Yeah, the question is, we're going to accept what you just said, but we want to know what we're doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Now, you're also going to be charged extra. We're going to give you a resolution to mm -hmm. establish extra. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, almost every application that comes to the board will actually have, have a little extra. Because uh, yeah. it's. Oh. It covers the. Um, when we bring in. See, I'm speaking. Others is what it just said. Yeah. Others, what she said. Okay. And we are we're working on minimums so that everybody knows when we come, we're going to have a minimum restaurant. So, um, uh, <clears throat> we right now we don't have an escrow policy. It's being drafted. It's almost at its final stage. Mm -hmm. So that's why it sounds like we don't know what we're doing. Oh, yeah, we do but, every, but we do. No, I guess it's going to change to everything. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, okay. we're going to, yeah, we're going to vote on the number today now. And yet, and yet, to find what she was saying, any consultant that we have to hire right. to review it, or our attorney has to review it and guide us the right path. Yeah. It's up to the applicant to pay for that. That's the purpose of escrow. And it helps you. So you won't do anything right. wrong. Because when your plans are stamped, they're great plans, they're perfect, they're active. Did, okay. And then she also mentioned the lot line adjustment mm -hmm. fee. Mm -hmm. But everything that we do is a fee attached to it. Yeah. And this, this lot line adjustment is a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And That's then one check. That, that, yes. And then whatever the board decides on the edge yes. yes, you have to do that separate separate one. Okay. Um, and any balances at the end of the project, I'll return the next idea. Yeah. And if we run out of money, we will actually try to punish the extra. So it becomes a bigger project than nothing. There's a lot involved. A lot involved. Uh, There's a lot involved in just a lot of money. Yeah. So, okay. FYI, do you have, I mean, not that it's going to necessarily affect our timetable, but just so that we know, do you, you don't, do you have a closing date or all that's conditioned upon what we're doing? Oh, this is conditioned upon. Yes. The, the closing date, um, so this property is under contract date. Uh, the closing date is, is tied to the board approval here. So okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. okay, so uh, uh, we want to do two things tonight establish escrow and bring you into a public hearing, maybe for the there are public hearing requirements to make pretty simple a lot like this. We have them on all the stuff, yeah, we, right. So we all right. Are we going to do what do we do first? Because you, you talked about if we're going to take a vote for a simplified process, conditioned on the letter and whatever. Right. So there's a few things that the chairman was just bringing up. Mm -hmm. It was waiving the requirements other than the LIDAR topo and the zoning table. Right. Wait, yeah. in addition to uh, receiving the letter that we received, we talked about. Right. And then, um, you were going to set an escrow and you yes. were going to schedule the public hearing for next month. Right. Okay. 
Okay. And it's a type two secret action, so that means the board doesn't need to do any kind of environmental review. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so can I get a motion to set escrow at Jean? I'm gonna let Jean um do the motion. I mean, well, oh, I can do the motion, but I'll let Jean. We talked about a month and a month. Yeah. Okay. I say 15, he says. All right. <clears throat> I've researched other towns and villages as I've reported in the past. It's anywhere from, I think it's 200 bucks, you're up to $15,000. Sometimes. Uh, so, that, so that's variable on what, what other project it is. A lot line adjustment, you know, $500,000. You know, how much, how much, Consultant, are we going to need? How much attorney guidance are we going to need? Mm -hmm. um, we can we can do a thousand dollars. Is that your recommendation? Well, no, we can do a thousand dollars, and whatever's not spent, you, you get it back. It's it might be a burden on you right up front, you know, but we need something to work with. Well, if you want a recommendation, I I'd go for a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars, everybody. Oh, okay. Well, uh, okay. Can I get a motion? Wait, wait. You got a comment over there. You do. It's a little on the high side. Okay. Well, she got to say it. Don't. Oh, did. What are you saying? Yeah, I did. She I did, did say it. It's a little on the high side. Okay. So, what do you recommend? Half of that, five hundred, and plus she does a hundred. Okay. So we'll vote on it. Five hundred. Five hundred is not going to be. It's not going to be. No, it's not. Uh, but, but what we sit at the meeting, our time is built up. Okay, so um, and, and that's something we're going to go yeah. over in our training. It's time right here. You know? Before we talk, yeah. <laughs> so, anybody out of right. Not only that, it's something we need, <laughs> something we're using, and it's not going to go away. It's only going to get more as projects come to us. Okay, so what are we saying? Because uh, I had said 15, so no, I, I, got a motion. I got a motion on a thousand dollars. I it. So, um, so, that's I, I made the motion to the second. So now we went to the battle and Teresa will catch up with us. And um, who first? I, I made the motion to the junior right. second. $1,000. And we go back. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? <laughs> we'll send you the resolution and signed resolution. Right? Okay, and that check uh, will have to go to the treasurer's office. We'll tell you everything. Okay, do we have your we have your email address? Do we have your email address on your you sure you on the application? Yeah, it should be on the application. Right. I I, I was talking to you today up yeah. until about four o'clock. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Now we would like. Uh, can I get a motion to set this for a public hearing for uh, May fourth? Okay. Let's make a motion to set up a public hearing for May fourteenth. All in favor? Say. All second. Yeah. All in favor? Uh, uh, any opposed? Okay, John. We'll see you next month. So I'll okay. you, so we can come back with this in the end. Right, yeah. and you're gonna come back with the. Can um, I apply on? Do you mind just laying that down? So what yeah. I want. John, right, come you, back with what? Are you able to make the checks today? I yeah. can sure I was told to drop it off. Yeah. There we go. But if you if you give it to us tonight, if, you, off if you give it to me, I will hand it over tomorrow to the treasurer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a contract, you can just something yeah. that says that it's permission of the church. Right. And you want to read the So he's going to give you both checks? Yes. Lot line okay. adjustment for the application. One hundred and then those oh, lot line okay. adjustment. Yeah. 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 You need it. Sorry, can you do? Yes. So we can do it. 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 So no, there's only one sheet. I don't think that one. 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 I don't think that
Okay, so the second one. Yeah. 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 Put the address 16. Uh, we want the address on the full drive because it's different. Like, you want to spell each other. Yeah. It's not I will, I will hand the to these tomorrow and the sure sure for that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, so, it's to us as soon as you get that's, that's, uh, that's a signature. That's something that says when you're so you have a it's example, it should be it's something here. that says this plan has been approved by the planning board. So, I'm touching the truck. You know, if you're like, you're like, you're like, you're like, you're like, uh, it's not the the same the same one. Uh, yeah, but the, it, well, I thought it was a little bit of a set of plans. It should be by five Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a set of plans. It should be by no opposition to this we have on the next floor. True. No opposition if you have everything. No problem. I'm not promising you. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Everybody have a good night. You can have a good night. So we try to do the Saturday Thursday. As well, so we just get it done. Okay, we have other business first. I have a once we get through that, if everybody wants to say it, okay. All right, good. Now we're into other business. New business. Oh. Other business. Oh, that, was, that was new business. Okay, so we want to approve the bills. Did everybody get the bills? Yes. Can I get a motion to approve the uh, bills? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Okay, Trini. Um, wanna, oh, yeah, I sent everybody. I, uh, you sent it out. Uh, email showing that there's training that we can actually go to. Um, oh, Dutchess County Dutchess has County. upcoming right. training sessions. Yeah, 24th of this month. What day? I, I sent it every uh, the 24th of this month. They One have, of them is actually on lighting and photometric plans. Yeah, that's really good. Dutchess County. Um, yeah, we'll send it out again, and that will that that's like three hours towards your training. No, you have to go. And I heard nothing from that other training that we went to in um, Green County. I think it's like three hours. Because that was a lot closer. But I'm going to ask that that fee be paid by the, um, by the city. So we should not pay for that. Okay. So there are two spring courses in Dutchess County. One is on outdoor lighting, mm -hmm. and the other is uh, how to run a good meeting. And then there's upcoming ones on speaker basis. When it's there in it's five dollars per session. Right. But if you go to bring back the receipt, you know, when's the uh, first Tuesday, April thirty. Michael Rice, how can we reimburse them for going to a class that pays? I'll just give you have to have receipts from the city clerk. Okay. So go give bring the receipt and, and we'll send the city clerk to be reimbursed. Because I'm gonna go through all of them. What's going on? Um, you know what, I'm gonna email. He's, she's gonna send us all out again, okay. and maybe I'll talk to you later. Maybe we can all go together. Okay. Like but can you continue to just because I'm killing? Yeah. So, okay. Okay. So training. Okay. Okay. Did everyone get a chance to look at the minutes from um, March? Mm -hmm.
What you were saying was in the, I felt um, about how they should make changes. Uh, in March, yeah. The, yeah, uh, it was. the boulevard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So can I get a motion to approve the minutes for March 2024? I'll make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Good. Okay, uh, I'm gonna let Jean do his report last. But I sent you all the proposed planning book procedures for 2024. I sent them out late. But what it is is that we need to get a proposal, the plans in place as to telling applicants what they need to do. And that never existed? Uh, it's changed. Okay? It's not that it didn't exist, it's just now it has changed. Just a checklist? Um, oh, how about the checklist that Cassie was supposed to send us? I forwarded it over to Cassie, and that was for the town of Palmaine. Right. Name. right. Um, Cassie was going to review it and customize it. And, okay. it okay. the, the right. board. and that hopefully you make my job easier yeah, and right. the planning board job easier so that when you get a package in, it doesn't even start the review process until they go through all, all the things. All the stuff, yes. So you're not asking for photometrics or, you know, utility plans, grading plans. They're just supposedly going to the package. And we're going to put that checklist on our website so when people go to the application, you know, they see all of that stuff. They don't have to come here blindsided like this. Yeah. And it's the new application. Yeah, we're going to get to that first. Yeah. Also, who should they be contacting? Because right now, they should, you know, all applications have to come to me, you know, so that I can disseminate them. Me and the planning board secretary, but it just can't come to one. You know, it has to come to me. I have to know. And it has to come in within the 15 days. So this stuff, this information has got to get out there to the public so they can know. What, how do I go forward? It won't be by word. It won't be because, you know, maybe Gene is telling them it's going to be written where they can read it and understand it. Now, when when I was doing the escrow policy with the other two members of the committee, I found a checklist from another municipality and I enclosed that in the email to you and the other two girls on the committee. So there's already a checklist made. I don't see. Oh, you got to, you got to. Keep clicking down. Wow. It was like seven attachments to, to the one email, and its checklist is in there. And it's just what we need to we need to let the, let the public know this is what this is the guide for you to do your applicant application, and this is what we need to have. Okay, so we'll take yours and the one that Cassie sent us, and, and then, see if there's anything missing. And yeah. then Vicky's office sent out a. Policy, a draft policy. Yeah, that's 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 it. But after she sent it out, Susan. Oh wait, minute, you're talking minute. about escrow. Escrow. Wait, yeah. wait, we'll get to that right now. I'm just talking about planning board procedures, the basic oh. procedures as to how you submit an application, who you submit it to, how many days, what's the number, of the, you know, about. stuff like that. So we're just talking about the planning board procedures that I sent out to you. Please take a look at it because we're going to, you know, we're going to finalize that, put it on the website so people can understand what the steps are. And then please take a look at it. I'm just, I, I'm just like to add one thing to that mm -hmm. is procedures for the public for a meeting. Okay, why not? Can you email me or text it to me? And then I'll yeah, put it in. You might be like, you know, if we should settle in and like, keep talking for 10 minutes, you know, you talk to the board, not to each other, like those kind of like decorum things for the actual meeting so that people will come in. I'm, you know, you should have yeah. read, this is how the meetings are being held, and this is what we expect. Okay, so I'll talk to you. Sign, for these are the should goal. people sign in who want to speak? So we know. Usually, when it's a big meeting, we have that. But um, that's tonight. We that's have, about what we have to. Yeah, tonight I really didn't know how many people wanted to speak. I didn't know they were all here for a little long time. Because that was only impression because I did get a um an email from a concerned um uh resident that said, you know, um that's don't make sure. a decision, right? You know, so I was under the impression nobody was coming. But she said somebody was not there. And, Okay. Uh, but, wait, um, no, Therese, really yes. quickly. Uh, on your checklist when accepting and reviewing new applications, mm -hmm. the attachment didn't attach. It's not in the email. Where are you at? On here. Oh, it didn't attach? No. 
Okay, I'll have to send it to you. I'll send it to you tonight. All right, we do get the yeah, I did. I sent it to everybody. She said no one got the attachment. She's still. I apologize. Well, you know, I'm gonna say when it comes to computers, and I'm teaching myself. It's not only the huh? It has to be because I got it. This. No, that's the minutes. No, this is the so, procedure. So the jury got the game. You also recorded on it. Almost like that's the way you. No, this way you did it. I know, but it didn't look like that. Oh, I just think the common council had the thing. Did this one exist? Or it probably is, but things have changed, and I have kind of interpreted what was said as to what needs to be done now. Things that the planning board has changed. The way no, no, business. The meetings. Oh yeah, there is one. I think it's on. Um, it's on the front of our web page. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know. Okay. Okay. So. Um, that's something you, you and I need to talk about, and we will put it on that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of, you know, yeah, yeah. Yes. But I, I would like to in there that we should set a limit to the amount of time. Well, so uh, just, so, just going back a little, we'll look at what the common council has for code comments. But when we did a public hearing for a prior application, we did have set rules that we read before the right, hearing. Yeah, that's that's the the I read. So we can. You know, we can have those sheets available every time we have a public hearing to have a sign in sheet. Yeah. Yeah. And it can be right on the top. But those can be incorporated into the planning board's procedures, and we should make sure they're consistent with anything the common council has. I, I like that. I love that this way. When they sign to speak, that can be ready to have it. Mm -hmm. So you have to agree to it, you know, as part of the condition of the speak. So, so on our sign in sheet, it should be written there. Exactly. Uh, or something that we could pass out. No, but if you're going to speak, you know. Sounds good. Okay, so uh, some things are coming. Okay. So now we're going to have, uh, we're going to have to let Gene speak, and then you're going to speak about the technology. The new yeah, I'm just real quick. Oh, wait a minute. Do we have any other Yeah. This is a resolution to request the mayor to execute the contract with public uni No, but we have a resolution for his. That's so, but I guess who it was, Jean and Jane. Okay. But when you send it out, get it out. Okay, so. Go ahead. I really just spoke. No, you didn't. I got a point. Sorry, I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, Jean is going to talk about the escrow procedure. Just, just to repeat on what I said earlier, the escrow policy, it's basically 90% done. Um, the checklist I, I passed out. In the email to see what we can use, what the applicant needs to have. Um, and then the fees, the fees are noted elsewhere, but if it was part of the application process, they would know right up front how much they, they uh, have to pay up front. And then, secondly, now the treasurer is going to be collecting all the fees, and she needs to know that. So tonight we accepted his checks. For his project, but I'll be meeting with the treasurer. In fact, we should be approve her recommendation. Who's the person? The city treasurer. She sent the email. Oh, yes, yes. Um, did you, you, you oh, always get a copy of that email? Got it. And then, okay. And she's going to collect the fees and give a receipt, but we have to tell her also how much she keeps up. Well, don't you have a paper book? Another no, one. I have nothing. Yeah. We have nothing. Craig Head used to do this. Right. Craig Head did Craig A did everything. But now the treasurer is doing it. She's separate setting up a separate account for everything with a separate receipt. And she will be handling all the fees, checks, cash, money, whatever it is, whatever it is, and giving the applicant a receipt. When they come to us at a meeting, they have to show us a receipt. For some documentation from the treasurer's office that it was already paid. Well, right. if they have to pay it, right. I'm saying they paid it to us. We can't if you receive that. Yeah, we're not, we're not no, we're not collecting money. We're not collecting money. The it. problem is going to be just thinking it through who is the person who's going to do the initial intake to identify which fee, because your fee schedule has you know different applications yeah. for different fees, and you know people are not necessarily savvy on what all the names and types of applications yeah. are. So someone needs to be responsible 
and maybe your software will do this when the software, when the software is available, but someone would be responsible to say, this is what it is and this is the fee you have to pay. What well, first comes in and maybe that used to be in Yeah, see what she had also said that, uh, Jean, correct me if I'm wrong, that like uh, this gentleman, uh, Lucille Drive was our first test. So we told him what the fee was going to be and what it was. So he went on his check mm -hmm. and he gave us a check at the, um, so now, Jean is going to take it to the, um, yeah. the treasurer. Um, so uh, do we want them to come to us first or, you know, just send them an email? <laughs> and then, you know, what the fee is for? Ideally, you want the fee before they come. Yeah. Okay. What if they show up and they get some negative feedback and they don't show okay. up? You've already done all the process. All right, so what they can do is that when they send their application in, then I get it, I can, you can right away right. tell them what the fee is going to be yeah. and what it's for. And that's why I was saying part of the application process mm -hmm. is letting them know on paper that this. Right, for the, like for the fee schedule. Like this right here, planning board fee schedule. Okay. We could just take that and put it into the application. You know, so fair that's true. They don't have to go to another spot. Right. right now, you have to go someplace else to find out what the fees are. And then to make them aware that escrow will be established at a later time. Yeah. If we're in front, we would, I don't think we would know how much to do it. If we want to do a minimum of $1,000 for each application, then we could add that into Part of, that, part of that checklist and part of that, that process. Mm -hmm. I think we should have a minimum scale. Okay. If there's a big project, the minimum is going to be yeah, yeah. a small project. Yeah. 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 That's part of the extra policy that we've been doing. That, that yeah. it shows different ones. We just have to come up with our set things. So, so it should be scheduled right now, online. Um, it, yeah, it's online. <laughs> with the, you know, I got it from credit. Oh, yeah, there's a fee schedule for the applications? Yeah, yeah. we got it from Craig. Did you get it online? I, Craig sent it to me. That's how I got it. Oh, and that's from, uh, that's from uh, 2020, I think it was. I must say, bro, how does that compare to the city of uh, Colony? As far as your fee schedules? Yeah. I'd have to look and compare it. If you could send it to me, I can put it there. And, and they can, you said, um, they yeah. You can take that. Theirs is all online. You can go right on their web page and leave and pull all their. That's what we want to do. That, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it is online, but we want to make it. We just want the planning board to even be there. So yeah. when you go online, you get everybody. Okay. You yeah. have to go all the way to the bottom of the page to find out what the planning board. So we just want to get one. You know. Yeah, and it's a lot less. It's a lot less. I mean, it's a lot more. Oh, that's oh, all oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. We, if we needed them to be set, that's another conversation. Yeah. And I don't think it's, a, it's an option. We don't do that. That's that was, that was, the town of Nashville has to be. That was adopted, I think, in 2020. Well, we can recommend it, right? So, yeah. We can recommend it. No. Yeah. Well, no, it's the council. Council adopted that resolution with all the fees right. in it. But well, what I'm saying is, if, if we felt the fees should be increased with the recommendation, we could make a recommendation to the council and we would change it, which we should do because I think that was yeah. 2020 when it was approved. Yeah. Was the and things are being done differently. And maybe we should rec look into recommending a fee that already has, <laughs> you know, that's your own name. Our fees into, you know, a set fee. Because depending upon the complexity of the projects, mm -hmm. how big they are, that's going to change our. Well, how about the prelim preliminary once he does the preliminary on every application? I think you, you could have a preliminary extra thousand right. dollars if every applicant submitted, yeah. and that yeah. would take care of your initial right. review. Okay. Are that guys giving us a value discount? <laughs> you do yes, they are. Great. <laughs> Is that, 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 that huh? Rhinebex has all their fees online too. There's a lot of similar talent yeah. you could probably borrow. Well, my fees are paid by So we we're working on that. Now, now we want you to now we want you to give your report, Randall. Randall, give your report on what's happening. Okay, so Media so Labs, that's the software that we've been uh newly called that actually. That's the software that we've been looking at. Um, they are, as I described earlier, a relatively new company, they're a local company, 
Um, we had looked at a couple of different companies that have similar products. Their products yes. range almost triple in price. Uh, yes. This is a new company. I like what they were able to do. I did to customize the program. I had concerns and we raised them uh, at the demonstration about the fact that they were relatively new and you know just longevity and you know we don't want to have we want to have something that once we put these records in there we can then continue to use it. He wrote back a whole full explanation of how he planned to deal with that in case something happened with the company that our records will be preserved and uh, they seem to meet all the criteria of the larger companies. He said he would customize it for us, and the price tag, I think, uh, all said and done was like six or seven thousand. Mm -hmm. um, it comparatively, the other company was nine thousand as a special break that he gave us before I knew about the money community for that. But that price next year would have gone up to about twenty thousand mm -hmm. because they only do things in five modules, you know, five departments on the modules, and we don't need that yet. So, um, I, I think it's a great starting point. I think that it could be a, a good company to be responsive. I think that their product seems very intuitive, and I think that we should. I think we should, we should definitely give it a, a shot. And I think one of the speaking you were in on those. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll just reemphasize the fact that their rate was extremely competitive compared to others in the industry. The again, the, the software is very intuitive, very user friendly. They're a local company, that's is great. I also want to reiterate that we did explore the city's existing vendor that is being used by the code enforcement department and the clerk's office, and we found that it was actually not sufficient for what the planning board needs, and which is a really smooth um, experience on the uh, user end for the public mm -hmm. to be able to submit applications online and then on your end to be able to view and manage those applications uh, in a web-based portal. So uh, we decided not to go with these part of the city's existing better and, and uh, recommend this policy. And this, and this company specifically for the planning board? Yes. It can be used in other departments? It can, we can expand to other departments yeah. if necessary, but at this it's time, the rate right. is just as high. Right. And what this is going to do is uh, bring us up in the new millennium <laughs> where people can actually go online and submit their applications. Get all the information they want at one site, you know. Mm -hmm. And I th are we all going to have access to it? Every member, yeah. Every member will have access online. We make comments. Is there any integration needed for like the treasurer to no. see? No, there's no. Uh, it doesn't process payments. It, what it can do is you can set it up so that it tells the applicant what their fee will be, um, depending on the application type that they receive with, but at this time it's not a payment, it doesn't have a payment. And they, but they can upload their receipts, so they can right. see that they did yeah. pay. Yeah. Also, um, their plans can be uploaded on this, and we have a we have a good picture of what the plans are, you can put them up on the board when they come. It's just bringing us up into the millennium. I mean, maybe in two years we have to change it all, but right now, we, we're not even there. We're not even up to par as it is. Will the public have access to the portal, or is it a private? Yeah, yes. yeah. The public will be able to see their applications, yeah. other applications. I mean, there are there are back end stuff that only the board will be able to see, but the public will be able to see. They will have as much access as they can have. <laughs> and yeah. and it was for for you know better 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 public communication and interaction. So. I thank you, Randy, and thank Randy you. for, and, and Michael. I mean, thank you. Okay, so can I, any, anything, any more questions? Well, we need a resolution. I think you do the resolution. Correct. Yes, there it is. Okay, so we have. Oh, right. Okay, okay. So let me so make a motion. Can I get a motion so, to accept? As drafted, it's a resolution asking the board to come back. Okay, so can I get a motion? Can I get a motion to? Except yes, we, we, we're going to pass it. Yes, it's fine. Right. All right. So, uh, can I get a motion? Who wants to? Randall? I'll make a motion. Aye. Okay. Jane. Second. Okay. And all in favor? Aye. Um, Aye. I'm not just saying this again. Did you send it to me? I emailed it to you, yeah. Okay. So, what? And then a tree attached to it, so it goes together. 
Oh, but it is it in the email? Yes. So when I send it back with the right signature, she can write it. that percentage Tracy did it plugged and then send it back. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Now, can I get a motion to adjourn? No. No. Why? Why not? We know I can do this. Yeah. Oh, well, we do the meeting first. Okay, can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting for? Um, Oh, wait a minute. Hold it. We can't get a, we got a, um, we had a, uh, an applicant at 252, 52 Union Street with an escrow account. All the bills have been paid, all the documents signed, sealed, and delivered. So they have a balance that we need to, um, reimburse them. Okay. So this, this is a release of the escrow. What we do is we do a memorandum. Uh, the um, the applicant will send an email to me requesting that the um, that they we release the escrow. We, we uh, yeah, send it all around to find out if they owe anybody any bill somewhere, and they also have to show proof that they receive either the CFO from um, Frank or whatever else he gives that the, the project has been approved. Okay, and once that's all done. Um, then you know, um, I send I tell um, Gene. Gene does the memorandum to release the escrow that goes to the treasurer, and the treasurer writes the check and sends it. Why does that can have to ask for it? Because the, we don't. Once it leaves here, we we don't keep a track of when they're finished. They have to ask when they're finished. We don't give it until they're finished. Until they get the CFO or the what else the criteria besides the CFO. No, something else it gives. A certificate of occupancy, and if it's not a certificate of occupancy, what else? Yeah. Something, a certificate of compliance. Yeah. Once they get that, that means that project is finished, it's never coming back to the planning board. At least not that. And they have to let us know by asking for their um the dollar amount was two hundred forty eight dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, we hope that's right. Yeah, that's very right. true. Yeah, okay. And we and you know they add that's why they have to ask for it. Once they ask us, you know, people but if we start releasing it because we think they're finished, they may have to come back to the plan for for phase two, phase three, or something like that. Then let's start on we've had issues where during construction question has to be up. For what? So there have been issues when during construction question comes up. That's why the experts were But motion. Okay, a motion to no. uh, aren't you to authorize yes. Yes. Uh, I need a motion to authorize the release of uh I'll make a motion. A second. second, all in favor? Uh, Any opposed? Okay, so we're releasing the escrow to um yeah, say so it could be in the notes when when Linda type up the notes. Two fifty, two fifty two million Yeah, yeah, just the one. That's it. Yeah. Can I make a motion to order on me? No. What is that something else? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Nina's next. Yeah. No way. This is from Virginia Casico. That's right. Um, the yeah. yeah. oh, okay. Abandoned property applications. What? March twenty first. Policy. policy on abandoned applications. Oh. Abandoned so, building. Site plans are granted. Oh, I see. They yes. have a year, two years, three years to do it. Okay. If there's, they don't do anything in six months, then we get to be voted. We can. That's what it says here. <laughs> oh, thank yeah. you. Can we send this out to everybody? No, it's already sent out. No, but that, that's what she's asking. Yeah, asking, yeah. yeah. No. Oh, it's New Lebanon. No, that's what New Lebanon News is. Oh, okay. This is the third question. Can you do the same thing for the we can. properties? We can. Do we have a policy? No. 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 But we don't you want us to adapt well, the policy. Two, two different there's two different thoughts. One is once an app once a site plan is approved, but if it never gets built, you know, you know, it gets stale after a certain number of years. Is right. there an expiration? And the second issue is if someone submits an application. Before it's approved, and then they disappear for nine months, ten months, and they're not responsive. 
then you know, do you consider that abandoned? So which which is the concern? I think she wants both. Well, yeah. That's what she's talking about both. I mean, I think it came out of a conversation we yeah, had yeah, yeah. that we want people to do things in a timely manner. So that's, I mean, that's actually going to be on uh, zoning amendments. If it's, if you're talking about expiration of a site plan and once it's been approved, that has to be done on a specific legislation. By who? Like the common term would have to amend the zoning law. And we can propose an amendment. Yeah, that'd be nice. But, and how, uh, I mean, so. Maybe that's something we could bring up. When we're doing the comprehensive plan, because we do have that. Or are have, you doing the comprehensive? I'm no, not. We're not the doing city it. is it's doing it. it. Yeah, but we do have that. We have input. We do have that situation now on Seventh Street and Uni. A hotel was approved mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, and nothing has been done. <clears throat> not, right. So that it needs to be that is. Would that be us? Oh, that's a zoning change. Because that is once someone has their approval. The zoning law governs expiration. We can't overrule. So can we shelf that, but keep that in mind and have that as some feedback to the common council? Of course. Yeah. Also for escrow, right? Because we're talking about approved projects, but we don't talk about the projects that they have and that they have funds left escrow. So we don't do it should return letters. Right. So but in I, your escrow policy, see. you might right. How do how do we decide if something is abandoned? And so if they're abandoned, we probably won't know where they are. It's a contract. Right, but we don't have a contract. So that's something no, we don't have anything. Right. But that was the purpose of that email is a developer policy. I got it. So you guys can decide if you want to you know the the, the pre-approval policy can be worked into documents if that's something you want to tell you. But you, you have an example of what the Netherlands has done. It's a catch for it. Yeah. yeah, the gentleman from the Netherlands sent it to us. I think I forwarded it. Yeah. Okay, so does that sound like a good idea to. Sounds like that's like something that we keep on our shelf? Okay. And not forget about it? Okay. Yeah, I think that would be. What do, you, what do you mean? Just to let it set, or, be, well, or should we develop a policy, or a, we should put something in writing? Well, about the escrow, but about the other thing is something we should. You have a policy that's for applications that are pending before. It. So that could be a, a planning board policy. Okay. So that's a spirit. Right. <laughs> but, 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 we have a situation. I, I mean, I would. I don't know if I'm using the right but well, we do have situations where we have not seen the act. But what I'm saying is that not, is that no. In order to tax the whole policy, don't put out something that's very quick. The only I think we might just want to add something because you don't want to hold on to these old escrows forever because we could get stuck with money we don't know how to return to. So we could, should have something that says. If after a notification from the chairwoman, you know, like they said, that there's a certain letter that gets sent, if we don't hear from you within 45 days, then we're going to consider your, your application abandoned and we're going to turn your money. But you wouldn't even think to send that letter until six or nine months. Right? So you can come up with something you think is reasonable. Okay. Uh, you're with the actual committee. Your committee, that's. Uh... Dr. Young and Susan. Or going to see. Okay. Where's the last step? Check. Let's see if you have anything else. Yeah. We want to build the track. Okay. I'm going to build this up because it's been said again. No, you're right. Sorry. Okay, I got it. Oh, I don't think it's because she was one of them. Okay, no, I mean, I've been reviewing the, the, the comprehensive plan, so these things would have come up later. Okay, so now can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? Yes, I, I first second, did, second all in favor. Do you have something else? No, keep going. Oh, okay. All right, wait a minute, sir. Okay. So we're, we're so meeting is sufficient.